Nossa. I was talking to somebody else, and it was we were in room 408. So I was all set up in room 408. Somebody was supposed to be in here. I, I'll say yes. <laughs> 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 That's how I am. I know you guys are going to be here. Well, I trusted somebody in the conference room thought I'd be great. I guess I'm okay. Sorry. So, good to know. I'm going to talk about the conference. Ready to go home. We were just saying, I don't think the diehards are still here. Yeah. Let me double check something. Yeah, and I went. I went home last, or not home. When I definitely wasn't going out. I'm dead, dead tired of drinking beer, right? Uh, but I did make a few. Uh, you know, as, I'm, as you tweak things, you never finished with it, no. So I'm gonna get the USB one I have on there, and uh, and I'm not even sure what I changed. You know, it's just a. You're never happy with the product. You... Okay. Oops, wrong mouse. Okay. And hopefully I I can get okay, I flow sampler. Ozone rule. That no, oh, I closed all this shit down. We're gonna have to what we call IT. <clears throat> Tell you what, I can wing it with that one. <laughs> Let's see here, slideshow. Um, oh no, y'all are supposed to go home, man. Aren't y'all tired like me? Yes. It's right. I told Steve nobody's gonna be there. It's Friday. It's Good Friday. Yeah. But I said I'll commit to giving a talk, right? Huh? Yeah. What 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 this is is a 
I don't like to talk on products when, in the heart and soul of an elder. I, that's all just been done for 80 years, right? I like to try to find something new, and I challenge myself to learn it better. And uh, here, so here, since it's local, the New Mexico rule uh, to me was, and I hate these state rules comparing because you have federal state rules, DOT. I mean, trying to wait for all the sign, and you try to figure out, look for some stuff, right? So the state rules are tough to begin with when you read a lot of federal rules, right? So you got the precursor rule that covers all these different source categories, which I'm an Eldar person, right? First time years, right? I focus mostly on Eldar, but I forced myself to try to understand some of the everything from pig launching to, you know, that to at least put the control requirements. Uh, and I've been, I'm a geologist, graduated, spent some time in the oil field, got tired of the ups and downs. So I understand that well, it, it, it intrigues me, but I'm not, not any good, not an expert, whatever that is. In Eldar, you know, is where I sadly lived for 30 something years. And so that's sort of, that's sort of would be the take on this. It challenges me to learn, to really learn some other source categories. And then, uh, so I'll provide that information, but I'll really be, you know, rocking and rolling on the Eldar and the monitor requirements. I was going to jump in a second, but uh, so I can do it. IT version or audio visual guy. So, something I mean, I'm interested about this being what happened you let me run something in one time. You put the audio visual version in if you want it while I don't play a lot of them. Yeah, I'm going to do Okay, we're going to start an audio visual guy channel. Fresh water. Probably an hour and a half, two hours. What we looking at? Last night it was so bad because I. Did anybody else go to uh, Spasmatics? You know, you're still talking to customers, but you're yelling, right? And by yesterday, this thing was hardly working at all. My wife goes, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to suck it up. <laughs> Uh, we have an audio visual guy <laughs> coming back over here to fix what I messed up. Okay. And, uh, and then it will be the whole screen. Right. And, uh, and, uh, so we'll fix that, but I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> move forward. Probably periodically going over and getting some water, trying to keep the vocal cords wet, you know, and, uh, we'll go from there. Maybe not. That's not what's on my computer screen, in case you're wondering. Any audio visual guys? Are we just are we just uh, environmental people? Wait a second, I see something. 
I see something. Huh? Yeah, it was all working. <clears throat> it was working. And I decided that I knew enough about this to just put another PowerPoint presentation on. And, uh, uh, and, and I broke it. What I think it does it <clears throat> is there's actually because I clicked on three different PowerPoint presentations that are in the queue, right? That are when you click on PowerPoint that are up and trying to find and when I click on that one uh, that shows a matrix like that. Uh, it comes up to here. Try to see if. Nothing moved. OK. Yeah. It's work. Yes. OK, so the only thing he'll do is he'll we'll, we'll get it right on the screen before we go too much further. I'd like to know a little bit about the audience. Uh, I mean, I know a lot. Of, I know I know you obviously, uh, but uh, start here. Uh, don't need a big O. I mean, are you upstream, midstream, downstream consulting? What's your what do you want to get out of it? And that will help me. I do consulting work. So you're here because your boss said you had to be. I am my boss. Oh, good. So you actually want to learn something. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go. Who are you with? With the Texas Commission on Environment Quality, here to learn about some of the differences between our state requirements and other state requirements. Hey, breathe deep. Yeah, breathe deep. Yeah, we'll figure it out. That's not too bad. Can anybody read this? Yeah. If you can talk, I told him I'd be this 80 audio visual person. Uh, yeah, I just like to run it and I messed it up. Oh, you got that yes, I'm not reading, so. No, but that's okay. Like, you're 61, can't see. No, that's okay. <laughs> what was the what was the issue, sir? Well, uh, I think it's supposed to be bigger. What happened was uh, they, they had me set up, mm -hmm. and I had made a few changes, so <clears throat> I thought I would drive, mm -hmm. and I I went off the road. <laughs> okay, I understand. So it just needs to be set up to where you can present it full screen. Yeah, yeah, little thing. But I, I, it won't, it won't stop. We need to go on. Okay, yeah, but I'll, I'll. Great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Industrial. Yeah. Um, great. 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 In New Mexico, so uh, his boss said he has to be here. So uh, here he is. Did I miss anything? <laughs> Not for years. Lisa Brand, I'm with Gas and Heat. I'm a senior at the Quality Supplies for our Southern Department. We have a lot of that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you. Yeah. All right, I'll give you stack this because we butt heads all the time. <laughs> Interesting about me. She said it was, yeah, I kept slow walking because I had to help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I have a great story. So, when I do talk about the TCQ, but I did it personally with the TCQ. Okay. I'm recording this, by the way. Good. <laughs> No, it's, it, people that know me, I'm pretty opinionated. It, it, it's to be delivered differently, but uh, you know, you, you definitely understand how some people perceive and maybe how industry feels. And I'm not any kind of consultant. David Martinez, I'm going to just make some of the director of the Okay, I don't know if it's on the right slide anymore, but. No, I can change it. Okay, great. Thank you. So what 
the way I tried to do this, okay, because when when these rules come out, we got to figure them out so we can t t help our customers comply because they know the big thing. Eldar is, which I'll be talking mostly about, right, is in their world is about this big, right? But for the compliance world, it can, it's like this big. There's a lot of places they can fail, okay? So when you're, in El, when, when you're at Eldar, every and, if, or, may, comma, and all that is, is important. And it's, it may be eight standard deviations outside the norm of really the whole rule. But the, once again, the compliance is back here. If you don't, if you forget to quality certify an analyzer, you didn't do any monitoring for the period that that analyzer was used. So your customer possibly has been put to X thousand dollars per component per monitoring event in a multiple. So you get 3,000 components times whatever the minimum, you know, the, the, the enforcement memo for TCEQ. If I forget, I think TCEQ, right? Yeah. No. So we know what it is. So it, it, it's, it, it can be incredible. Usually it comes down unless you're a bad actor and all that stuff. But so when you read these rules, we, we set up SOPs for our technicians to handle a lot, train on the middle, come up with a, uh, a mechanism operationally to catch the gray areas and make, make people aware of that. Realize that it may only happen one out of 10,000 times, that one time can be promised. So Eldar is a very for unforgiving program that for the customer and the con consultant companies, my opinion, right? But it's also very important. Uh, the, shit, the stuff should stay in the pipe. The operators should make sure it happens. There's, there's no doubt. You know, oh, that don't matter. Well, methane didn't matter. I mean, even our engine testing rules, non-methane VO, yeah, VOC, right? No one cared about methane. Or what? It's a VOC rule, right? Now, now methane has some impact. We can, we can argue the science, but, you know, things are happening, right? Uh, so now we control methane. You know, the next one probably going to be the hydrogen economy. All of a sudden, we're going and then we're going to find some chemical soup, hydrogen. So the main thing is whatever it is, if you're making and selling it, keep it in the pipe. Don't let it go to the atmosphere. So that's sort of the mafia there. I'm going to get into the rules. And I just tell you, I, I, I work for a consulting company. Uh, I sort of have both opinions. Uh, I think they should do it. I think it's too hard. I think you'd be more flexible from a regulatory point. Uh, but we're going to stick to the rule here. So if you, when I give my opinion, at least you know where I stand. We created a rule, Texas did, and New Mexico for upstream oil and gas. Uh, never had really had a template. Texas had a little bit of a template, right, to work from. Uh, it was a uh, subchapter D, division three, uh, the VOC rule, which also the HR VOC rule was copied off of that, right? So. They had that, so they work off of that template, same type of situation as far as the design of the rule itself. New Mexico, I'm like, wow, how, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what the leak definition, I gotta go down here, then the frequency's up here. So, you know, we're used to seeing valves in the federal rules. Here's our leak frequency, here's our leak definition, here's our delay repair requirements, here's our 515, you know, all those things are under the component for valves. In Texas, uh, we got the, we got control, well, not really like a laser. You got you have control requirements up here, but our monitoring inspection requirements are here. Our future emission requirements are here, but the monitoring requirements for the future emissions are in here. So it's to somebody and I, old people are uh, don't like change anyway. OK, so I mean, it's OK to change the new generation. It may be very fine, but me, I, you know, I, I want to know if I got my future emission requirements here. I'm like, man, where's my DOR requirements or this? Well, it's up here. So really the Texas rule, even though there's some other sources in there, it's mainly an LDAR rule. Now the New Mexico rule, the, every, the equipment leak, all the equipment leak stuff is under the equipment leaks. Hypercarbon, pig launching, pneumatic controllers, no birth. So when you step back from it, you sort of, and the reason I can buy two is because they're right next to each other. <laughs> and and it, it makes sense to sort of understand how these rules weigh together. Uh, so they don't line up. 
But I want to, if, if I'm going to compare the two when I do this presentation, I want to stick to that mantra and say, okay, here's what we have. How would they line up? Where are they similar? Where are they different? Where does Texas fall? The Mexico is obviously a little more, more rigorous, you know, but uh, and go through it that way. So as you go, definitions or definitions, applicability, whatever, test you is oil and gas. Uh, on compressor seals, they're the same. Uh, pneumatic controllers, uh, New Mexico is a little more stringent. And we don't, from an upstream standpoint, Maybe it's because we have the railroad commission. I'm trying to understand it right. It's things going on like that. We don't control some of these other production. Okay, prior to achieve more of the pre-production processes, like pick uh, uh, where's liquid transfers, well working overs, and things like that. Uh, or we might control to the railroad commission. I do not know all the railroad commission rules and those type of things. Okay. So, so what I do is I, I'm just trying to compare these different rules. In red, or be the, be the ones that I focus on, uh, that I think I have strong knowledge on, okay? Uh, being in the business for more than 30 years, I have, I have a lot of knowledge on the others. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to mention them, but I actually don't work with storage tanks other than this, these hatches and uh, inardo valves and things like that to come out the top control requirements. So if, if you want to talk about a shoe or a pipe standing, uh, a floating bridge stands on, things like that, uh, I'm not your person, but on control requirements and that, uh, you know, I, I can, I will address those. Uh, as I see in Texas, I'm going to talk about some funny things, it, and I've been here for Texas forever. Okay, so don't worry about that. One of the things is we have to have alternative control requirements. I mean, federal rules has it. Uh, uh, NSP is down for wireless right underneath, I think, 483, whatever, dash two, dash one, or whatever it was. But it said, here's our rule, but you have an alternative. If you can meet, eat, eat, meet this incredible method of equivalency, you can you can apply for an alternative. I, I've never seen anybody use it. Uh, there's not much uh, reporting requirements, and uh, that's about it. I'm going to start. We're, we're going to go through each one of those. I'm going to start with Texas, okay? then I'm going to go to New Mexico. Knowing this is how they're laid out, okay? So in Texas, obviously, I won't be addressing these. And over here in New Mexico, I'm going to address them to the control requirements, but I'm not going to I'm not going to dive deep into them. Okay. We'll begin with the applicability. B7 and in Mexico apply specifically to counties. Okay. In Texas, it's a DFW ozone non-attainment area. In Houston, it's the uh, uh, those counties there. Corpus used to be, this is where we are now. It's difficult and reciprocated. We basically have, we're, we're going to 95% control enclosed things like enclosed sealed device. Pneumatic controllers. Well, that's, that's sort of written wrong. But basically, we're going to zero uh, bleed on the pneumatic controllers, except at well sites where we're allowed 95% control and uh, uh, any of permits or maybe some of the other, the uh, BLM rule or River Colorado. Remember the 600 cubic feet for Yeah, that's in there. But if you're at a, if you're a well site or natural gas processing plant, for pneumatics, go to zero bleed. You don't even want to compress this. I mean, you probably see air numbers flowing everywhere in Mexico. My customers are all the one there. I may be getting a little bit ahead of myself. See, there's storage tanks. Yeah, they're applicable. Uh, basically, uh, huge emission components. This is sort of a redundant slide because I talk about it again. Exemption, if you didn't know, which hopefully you do, in Texas, it goes down to 1%. What, what's the applicability for VOC content in a federal? 10%. So 
that can be messed up. Louisiana is the same way, by the way. Uh, uh, 2021, uh, LA 2021, 21, 22, they're all the same thing. It'd be all in there, all of a sudden, say, here's your 10% VOC, then they'll throw in, oh, if you're a gas plant, you go down to 1%. So, uh, in your non attainment areas or go state rules. And the biggest thing is you think on a federal level, where <laughs> we comply with NSPS, BBA, or KK, which says it's BBA, which says we're 10% VOC. But if you build that thing in Texas or Louisiana, one of those counties, and you're under state permit, you do the same program, but you, you actually include your residue gas. If you know what I'm talking about, that's what's below 1%, right? So we used to didn't have to do that residue gas after after the methanizer, off the top of the methanizer, because it's basically 98, 99% of methane. Uh, we got an exemption for insulated components, which is really nice because uh, in the cryo area, it's full of it's full of it, and, and uh, you can't probably get to a to a, a device inspected. You almost have to cut through the insulation. And Texas, comparing to federal rules, we got we got a a, a small well exemption based on. Throughput 15 barrels of oil equivalent, right? And uh, they did away with that in quad OB, quad OC, and, when, and actually quad OA, because they, they said, no, no, it don't matter what size it is or what the throughput is, okay? What matters is, you know, uh, the ancillary equipment around it. So we have a small well, a single well head exemption, things like that. Uh, New Mexico, I really can't remember off the top of my head what their exemption is, but I believe they have an exemption too. But the second part of this presentation will go through New Mexico. And then compressors, once again, this is the control requirements. Okay. So just like the state rules, uh, well, just like the federal rules, I'm trying to do a state rule. It's like the federal rules, they require that leakage go to some type of control, 95 or, or 95%. Uh, if you're if you ever done Eldar for a while, you ever wonder why this big compressor is done annually, and all the, the little valve right off the suction thing is done quarterly, uh, and then if they, and if you ever done compressors from the Eldar perspective, where the heck do you monitor? So there's all sorts of things like okay, <laughs> you know, because it's compressor, right? The seals are enclosed. Well, if they're supposed to be operated, it's not detectable. Compressors. Are the worst. I mean, they should never be done at the 21. You can't get to it. I mean, if you have every ADEX has a compressor, Caterpillar has a compressor, XYZ has a compressor, there's a compressor that are 48 years all the way out there. And I don't even, I'm looking at it like, I don't know what this is. That'd be bad. Uh, and it has to be a gas compressor if you've ever been on the, or the gas pipe, then it has up in the permeate over there and acid gas unit back there. Yeah, now that compression, like, yeah, I don't know. You know, it doesn't even look like a compressor, but it's a compressor. So, uh, but if they're perfect for OGI, I can stand back like this and I can see if there's any hydrocarbons. If you're experienced, there's some heat with the compressors too. But I mean, if you're an experienced OGI operator, you can look at where there's problems, whether it be at the, the seal. I'm not, am I worried about the crankcase? And once in a while, no, we don't regulate the crankcase. That's the engine side, it's no product. Crankcase that my thing up all day. <laughs> so there's all sorts of things going on. But we focus on the product side, not the engine side, right? The engine runs the compressor. It runs off the natural gas too, which the stack companies, we we actually handle there. You know, we do a, a VOC test. So we get methane on that every day, but we don't report methane because it's a VOC rule, quad J, quad, quad I, et cetera, et cetera. I'm rambling a little bit, but I'm saying compressors are tough. Okay, so regulating compression for method 21, I, I think should go away. It don't make sense. If, if, if you're if you're a regulator, go out and look at a compressor and say, well, how would you have a technician put a probe up in there? Where is the seal? It's behind the behind the thing. Oh, it's easy. Did anybody go to my presentation yesterday? I had a picture of the compressor. Yeah, because. I mean, that just gives you an idea of how complicated they are. But in, a, in a highly technical presentation, a lot of people up here go to here. I felt the need to show people what a compressor looks like, you know, and how the in, insides, I had cutaways up and things like that. So, I mean, 
If I can tell you anything, compressor things can be done better. Pneumatic controllers. Uh, everyone knows what a pneumatic is, right? I'll be I'll begin there. It's just <clears throat> energy to make a valve actually. Okay. That energy in remote areas has been given by natural gas, the tops of a separator. Okay. Uh, we used to use compressed air. We got a we drop it down from whatever pressure that is to around 30 psi. It goes to the top of control valve. It's either fell on, fell off, and when a signal comes to it based on a level or whatever it is, whatever that signal is, it opens up. I'll use a separator for some dump valve. Okay. When that that toilet bowl level gets up to that level for the level in that separator, right? It actuates a, a almost like a, a lever that pushes on a, a thing that that actuates energy or air to the dump valve that's over here. You know, you, you tear out the it goes like that. It opens the valve, drops the liquid to the toilet bowl. It's like a level, you know, float on toilet bowl. Once that gets down to the level that wants it, it shuts. The valve goes back to close, and that's it's repeated over and over and over and over again on on separators, vessels, and things like that. Uh, they've been they've been used for years because there was no access, so they didn't put a compressor on there. Now, sorry, the quadro quadro A, we have to control that. It has to be no more no more high bleed, low bleed. They find what that was six standard cubic feet per hour, and now we're now we're going to. This is for well sites, by the way, or reduce emissions. The world's going to, and you should, if you're an operator, or if you're a regulator, then we need zero bleed. Okay, if, if there may be some situations you don't have access to grid. Okay, do we really want them to implement a gen set with a with a rice reciprocating engine to operate a generator to run? Do we want more emissions being done from the uh, from the engine so that way they don't you know, have to use uh, uh, natural gas as a pneumatic. Uh, goes to flare, closed vent systems have to no detectable emission. Uh, that's just like it's been used for years. Basically, it's once a year and the fleet definition is 500 PDM. Okay. Uh, there can be no bypasses, car seal lock, all that is, it's a, it's a device to make sure that that, that valve is, remains in shut position. And you have to have a key to un to do it like that to unlock it to actually the valve so that way it can bi it will bypass going to a flare. Refineries have had that regulated for years. Okay. Not a storage tank guy, uh, but on the control side, the big thing is uh, no. Uh, all your openings have to have a, a lid. <laughs> okay, can't be open. So that's what the, that's sort of what that says, right? Uh, any of those have to remain closed. If you find a leak, you have to address it within 15 days. That's actually in the storage tank rule. And, and curious thing is, well, we're looking at with the OGI, the regulated by OGI too. So, it, so it's codified in there as a general storage tank rule, right? But it's also regulated under the old future emission requirement. It is a future emission. Uh, this is what I was talking about as far as. Uh, some of the tank requirements, some uh, submerged fuel pipe uh, based on different sizes and things like that, uh, vapor pressure of the product. Uh, if you're in Texas, uh, it's a, mostly the second one, unless you're in the Eagle for mm -hmm. that, that's that's a little hotter fluid. What I mean by hotter, it's a, a little lighter, higher vapor pressure. They actually have to boil it sometimes to even transport it. So if you've been in the oil field for a while, you know, they call it hot. That means it's higher vapor pressure, flash easier. We start getting up to Permian, you know, it's, it, it's usually between the L second one, less than 11 PSI. So overall, that's just an interesting thing. Each basin, can, if it's a, your shell type of gases or your shell production uh, tends to be a little hotter, a little lighter stuff, uh, especially up in the Eagle for I've been here now for years. Uh, Permian uh, seems to be a little heavier, normal and the shell production. Hainesville's almost pure gas, DJ Basin. So each basin has their dynamics that may, may impact the amount of gas. And there's additional requirements for floating roofs. Like I said, they know that. They can't build the tank. That's that's truly not in my realm. Okay. <laughs> you can forget this. 
And, and, and I'd say this sort of tongue in cheek, but uh, remember I talked about alternative control requirements earlier? Nobody uses it that I know of. Right? Anybody ever seen? No, it costs too much money. It's easier just to show me, tell me what to comply with. And let's, let's do it. Uh, one thing I'm a little come, have you all in Texas? You okay, everyone? Okay. Subject and I'm um, sorry, we talked about this in the beginning. Subchapter B, Division 7, became applicable January 1. I was at 4C last year, or maybe it's a TCQ show, I don't remember. And I'm talking to a consultant, you know, somebody who I've been visited with for years. We worked together, and he goes, Boy, what are you going to do about Subchapter B, Division 7? Me being the confident person I am. Well, yeah, I'm looking into that. Go back, like, holy shit, what did happen? Where did this come from? Nobody even knew this rule was being was being done. No, I typically don't comment on state rules because I'm too busy commenting on federal rules right now with everything going on, right? So I didn't. And I am my world and my sort of what I do and reputation, not just what I do as a business, but customers expect me to know rules. So I go back and I look at it, I'm like, Holy cow. So I get back to Houston after whatever show it was. I contact One Oak, Enterprise, uh, uh, Targa. Even though I don't do their Eldar, right? Uh, I, I do the Indian tests or I do all the mobility. They, they come and ask me questions, right? And I, even the consultants, Trinity, uh, or whatever the different ones are, that actually help them stand for blanks up to more reporting. Uh, uh, I, I called them because I know they're the ones I don't have direct contact with them. Nobody knew about this rule. That's on the boat. In tech, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Ma Bellevue, the big fractionators. Nobody knew about it. Like, well, dude, <laughs> and I'll get to it in a second, but how can that happen? So I'm, I'm calling up a TC, I'm reading it, and we'll go and say, the rule was written wrong. Okay. And oh yeah, we're, well, what are you going to do? Okay, well, well they they did some, and I'm gonna tell you how it's written. I'll and I'll segue back to it again. This is an important part about that. Not their fault. They were they are charged. They I'm talking like the third person. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying we as an industry we got to get better, but we're so busy, right? I mean, just to put this. I mean, I, I'm working on these presentations at night because it's it's January through March. The reporting season, right? For all the different rules, GHG and stuff like that, and change, and people coming back to vacations, customers stressed out because it's not just not just GHG and LDR. You got semi-annual reports and everything's else for them. So it's really a busy time, right? Well, so everyone's busy, but this rule came out, I think, in in uh, I'll say March of 22. I found out about it in June, June, May, whenever it was. As I look at it, get contact, and then talk to the guy who wrote it. Finally, figured out who that was. So they could try to weed through, try to get to the right person, right? And he was very helpful. I can't remember his name now. I got the email. And next thing you know, you go, okay, yeah, we need to change it. We need to change. They're very helpful. But unless we, if, if you're an engineer, it's not to make people interested here, but unless we tell them where they made a mistake, we're going to get what we get. So they were very, they can't change a rule overnight. There's a, there's a there's a process. But they put enforcement memos, which I did not include in here for four certain ones. I'll bring them up if you need copies of the enforcement memos or memorandums of enforcement, right? Where they say, uh, this is that, uh, do not enforce on that, because they can say it's a I can't remember the name of the memo, but they basically give guidance to enforcement not to enforce on this issue. We're rewriting the rule for this. So they may be doing them. If you've done it, they, they, they require the monitoring of heavy liquids. The lean glycol and the lean aging, which, which, you know, we could go up there with a stick and had more value. Because it won't, I mean, vapor pressure won't be able to get above 500 ppm. And, you know, if it comes out, it, it ditches right away. So it doesn't exist in the air state. It's oil, you know, it's, it, it's so, but some people, I mean, like Motita just come to say, I'm sorry, 
Motiva, when they expanded to 600,000 barrels, they said they monitor their heavy liquids at 50 ppm. Okay, it maybe can exist at elevated temperature. Is you know uh, concentration in the atmosphere is a function of temperature and pressure, right? So if you're at elevated, at least at the skin temperature, right, we can't exist at a certain atmospheric contract. You know, uh, at a concentration theoretically, right? So and they got to and they got to drop their emissions from their heavy liquids so they can net out and add this over here without going over their overall emissions gap. So they do do it. But in a normal 500 ppm leak definition, it's not going to happen. So, and there were a few other things. And they said, wait, uh, we'll, we'll cover that in more detail. These are the fun parts. And you actually go through it and look back. Um, anyway, I know it's, uh, I find rules fun. I like it. I, I'm good at it. Or it, it's natural, not good at it. I'm going to say it. So, I, I like doing this stuff and digging into the weeds. We'll get into the future emissions. You drink the water if you don't mind. Um, what what time is it? Eight thirty-five. Eight thirty-five. Uh, I'll be I'll be going to get drinks. If you want a five-minute break, my voice could use it. Is that I mean like at nine nine fifteen? Just you know, hey 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 you, you know, it's time. You know, we can take a little break. I'll rest my voice. We'll go to the next one. I'm going to get through this in about two hours or less by hour and a half. So we're not being here to 12. It's just not going to happen. Nobody can do rules for that long. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if you do need a break, let me know. <laughs> and I'm going to need one too. My voice is killing me. We, we just saw over some details and spent a little bit of time on this. Now we're actually getting into the future emission requirements. Subchapter, subchapter D, Division 3, which was used to do the gas plants, okay? What, what this rule did after January 1, we regulated, first we regulated our oil and gas, okay? We have a, now have a rule for our upstream traditional well sites and compressor stations, which were not regulated under subchapter D, Division 3. But since this is an oil and gas rule, what they did was they took the gas plants out of D3 and brought them into uh, B7 starting January 1. Uh, leak definitions, everything, everything's pretty much the same. Okay. But the big deal, and I'll get to in a second, is frequency four valves. So in NSPS and most state rules, quarterly monitoring frequency. January 1, it goes to valves went to monthly. Okay. The big deal, the reason, the reason I mentioned Mount Bellevue, okay, and I'm going to throw out a number, very, very large fraction here, train after train after train after train after train on, in Mount Bellevue. Uh, if you're in the Eldar world and you have technicians or you've seen technicians, 67 technicians every day monitoring at one site. Just to keep up with the program. That's how many trains they have. These are huge. I mean, the scope of the gas plants on, on the bowl, on Bellevue, that's where they store that stuff in salt domes, you know, is incredible. Now, that's to keep up with quarterly monitoring and annual monitoring connectors. Can you imagine? All of a sudden, if you tripled your work, and, and, you, and they didn't know about it until June or July. So there's the impact of. Of rules coming out without preparing and, and written like that. Now, if I, for me, my biggest plan is I got one technician that can probably get it done in two weeks. All the valves, I mean, the connectors, you know, there's a lot of connectors, but you know, you average four to 500 a day work. That's 22,000, 2,500 a week for one technician, 5,000, you know, so the numbers are there. I, I, it's mind boggling. Uh, one of my associates does the audits out there, all the audits, right? So, but, and then one of them, they only have 17 technicians every day. Targa, I think they have 32 every day. So when we start changing these frequencies, you can only imagine what they're like, they're, they're mad, that's bullshit. They're going to skip periods of change. So it's, it's an operational change. So uh, I keep going back, I could not believe this came, that I missed this rule when it came out because of the impact, okay. 
This here, the reason I highlight them, I do have a memorandum uh, that actually says not to, you don't have to do it. Okay. But uh, uh, connect, connectors were annual and in addition to every heavy liquid. And in, in the real world, it's not that big a deal. It's just stupid. They won't find anything because all we're really talking about, if anybody knows about gas plants, when a gas comes in, we got a, 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 a glycol unit to dry it up, help dry it up, it will knock out pods. Then somewhere before the demethanizer, we got an AD unit to take out acid gases or CO2, right? That's just part of what we have. And it's just the lean side of the glycol and the lean side of the AD. So the real impact is small, okay? But you have to tag something that will never find a lead unless it's visual, okay? And it's oil. You never, I mean, literally, if you ever rub it your fingers, it literally is a little clear depending on the product, right? Whether it's ethylene or glycol or, uh, or AD. And it's, it, it's consistency of a light oil, probably a 30 or 20. Uh, you still have to comply with permit for PRDs. Uh, and a gathering and boosting section. Okay. I'm going to go into also here. You're allowed to use method two, just like federal, you're allowed to use method 21 or OGI. Reality is, we're, we're, we still want to use method 21 probably for the gas plant if you're using it now. You don't change. Because you got to have from federal rule is also regulated, right? For pressure stations, uh, they're regulated now, possibly if it's if it's a if it's a, if it's a new source. I didn't even think about it. Did it pass my mind? Don't it? Subject to B Division 7 and New Mexico rule, there is no grandfather. That should know one of the first things I said. Grandfather goes away. Everyone know what I mean by grandfather? Right. So all our NSPS rules, okay, except the one that came out with EG Quad 03, which would be the fifth that y'all developed the SIP from, right, uh, are new sources. So if you were assisting when that rule came out, good, ain't got to do nothing. Okay. When you when we make ozone or not, when we make state rules, that extension goes away. It applies to all sources. Because we're in an airship that needs a little help. Okay. So you don't get you, you don't get the option saying, I've been here, sorry, that don't apply to me. So when we go back to this, uh, that's a bigger impact over what the federal rule was. The federal rule for compression patients. Lighting and pressure station, one of those four, one of those Texas counties that was built after 215 from Auto A, then each day for all the others, right? You have to do a program. If you're before that, you just keep rocking and rolling. But if you're in these counties, after January 1, you do court it. Upstream should be OGI. You should never want to walk around a well pad and try to put the, put the analyzer that we use a camera. Uh, but you have that option. All components are quarterly for uh, gathering and boosting stations. Air I know what a gathering and boosting station is, basically a compressor station. I'll ask a lot of rhetorical questions and then answer it, but uh, it, it's a compressor station. Gathering and boosting. The difference is our main trunk lines in our world, Tar and Sea, Kendall Morgan, the big enterprises, you want to have these pipelines you hear about in the news and Everyone's protesting against. It's hard to get a permit. Those are transmission pipelines, right? The other ones is we get little gathering from little fields. That's that's uh, gathering and boosting. We're getting it from the actual from the actual individual production sites, and then moving into a centralized location to, to either process it, store it, and then it actually a little layer down the road, it all goes to a major pipeline, goes to an NGL facility or wherever it goes, LNG facility, I'm sorry. Uh, pumps are uh, uh, quarterly. Uh, Everything is quarterly, it's not specified elsewhere. I have it in yellow because we have a memo for heavy liquids. Here's, here's my card. I got that memo. I mean, it's I, I uh, it's just I had to have to open my laptop, put it on there, go to Dropbox or whatever. So, but my email is really easy. Boy at inrut.com. Okay, so I can't leave my first name, first name, boy. So I don't know where it's gonna go, right? So, but if you need my cards here, if not, if you want the memo, just 
get it, put it in a file somewhere if you ever got pulled down your holster, right? And uh, so that's stuff that it's three 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 separate compliance memos that address the heavy liquids and uh something else I can't remember. Okay. Yeah, but not the main thing is the heavy liquids. Uh right there. Monthly. Or gas. There's the big deal. That's what I was talking about. So uh, on there, it took the set connectors. Uh, I brought it in there because once again, we got the memo for the heavy liquids. Because uh, it, it talks about components. Okay. I mean, that's that's later on in here. What's a difficult monitor allowance for valves in federal rule? Right. Are you waiting? Any of my you can't have three percent more than three percent DTMs in a federal rule, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Well, one thing you really need to do is you, as you you know a rule, you need to know what's different from the next one. Help you apply. You don't want to memorize every freaking rule like I'm trying to do, right? You know the difference, right? Your DTMs in this rule is for components. So if you have three percent connectors that are DTM, you're not allowed. Okay. So that's what I want to get here. Is this is a, a lot of times this will maybe a component where the zone is like component type. So they talk about individual components, but then they have broad definitions of, of what the frequencies are. Because we've always cared about how many valves for DTM, right? <clears throat> and that made sense. You shouldn't put a valve that has to be operated where you have to get a manlet to get to it. What if you need to operate it? Just operation, right? Don't make sense. Connectors, I can't make that same argument. Even though the connections are associated with the valve or in line. So anyway, that's just some things I look at that I'm like, well, why they got connectors? No one's ever done that before. It happened. Not, you know, just not that big a deal for compliance, not that big a deal. But it's you as a supervisor of all, all, all your plants and your people, that people should be coming to you before they go to Robert and to me, possibly, or whatever. You should at least be somewhat aware of that nuance, right? So other than that, normal frequencies. I can't even read that stuff in the red. Uh, so basically, the RD still have to release. Uh, you have to hang a leak tag, 515. Interesting thing here. Let me see if I see it. But I know this, so I'm going to tell you. And maybe, maybe right here. As, in, as an hour company, we're concerned with getting our first attempt in time. Get our final repair done. Do our delay repair right. And make sure we get the compliance things done. The numbers. So if you've ever called like red rule, take a test, you look for numbers. You look for e look for things that you may get tested on. These are the things that you may get audited on. Because they're usually in your record keeping reporting, right? Uh reason I bring that up. In this OGI rule, you still got 515 in Texas. So even though we're used to having 30 days in a federal rule, it is a non attainment area. They do not change their uh, their first attempt and final repair. But they did have somewhere in this language, it's sort of silly. Remember how in OGI world, you can repair it and then under Quadaway repair it. And then we had 30 days to reinspect it. As we try to think about the way we have browns to go out there, they allowed you that flexibility. Whereas in NSPS rule, the date of repair was the date of verification. And reason in record keeping this matters, guys. Okay, and compliance this matters. Okay, so we would think that our date of repair would be the same as our verification, which is the way federal rules have moved forward since the uh, BEA. When they change the definition that a repair is not a repair until you have a verification. They went back here because of the cycle that may involve the resources it may take to go out and do remote sources is what I might be not logic but dictate. So we still have to do the for OGI. We're used to it method 21. That's our world, right? For OGI, it's in this basin, okay, in Dallas. Uh, it's the final repair is 15 days. The rep final repair date is different than the verification date for OGI because you still have 30 days on that. 
Okay, so 30 days from then. I think that's what it says. Yeah, survey and verify must be done within 30 days. And verify is verifying that the repair was done. The repair date is different than the verification date. So in your database, which you will eventually make sure you have, we, even if it's the same for the rule, if you copy from there, you know, in database world, we need, we need, a, we need a verification date. You should have that. Five three eight. Okay. In Texas, we actually have a AWP. It's called five three five eight one one seven three five eight, which is down the H on the Gulf Seaside, uh, uh, or non saving areas. Uh, I have a slide on that real quick just to give you a flavor of it. It's like uh, is anyone familiar with the AWP in sixty point one eight? Anyway, it, okay, thank you. Yeah. It, I know I'm, I'm, I'm popping out citations for the, uh, the AWP in 60.18. Yeah, it's been around for two, since 2008 or 2009. That's our original AWP, Alternative Work Practice. I'm sorry, African Alternative Work Practice, you're not familiar with that. Allows you to use the OGI. If you were a gas plant or whatever, you now have a codified thing. That's the one that said you have to do annual method 21, and nobody did because of, of the annual method 21. So you still have to keep your method 21 database up and all that, but you can use it's been more money and do do it by monthly based on number of grams per hour, et cetera, of your of your technology. So anyway, so for gas plants, okay, the frequency is determined by if you've been around since you that they had a table. If it was 60 grams per hour, which used to be that you could do it bi-monthly. If you were 100 grams per hour, it was a little more frequently. Maybe it was monthly or something like that. Carry this in table. Every OGI camera, okay, can see commercially available. Um, I, I, you know, I don't I don't say every, but everyone that you've used can see it can prove 15 or 20 grams. I actually have mass flow controllers, bubble meters, all that. So I check every device I have. I don't believe one manufacturer. I don't believe Colorado Meatag, whatever. I make sure that one can see. And off gallon clear can see one, two grams. They don't know when, when, when. And that's, that's outside. That's on a lab. I don't have a lab. I have a warehouse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I bring it out there and outside of the covered area, there'll have to be some wind that may be a little shade, maybe a little sun. Uh, but it can see one to two grams every day out the field. We, we prop it up with a, a methane, uh, excuse me, a propane tank. We get down, you know, the uh, rhino. Uh, I've set up a manifold. Uh, we can go right to it with a flow meter. I'm calibrated to propane and I set it for 25. Even in high wind conditions, I can see 20, 20, 20, 20 25 grand per hour. AWP says you only got to see 60. So I'm like, maybe if you see from, and we do it at different distances on a verification, right? So that camera is a good tool to meet what they say that we need to meet. In the new rule, everyone familiar with the Pennix state or at least heard about it, right? They talk about 17.5, I think, for methane, 18.5 for propane. For in, in all the QEQC, there's some numbers in there beyond, you know, keeping track of this, keeping track of that, training somebody for 2 million hours for them to be a certified, all this regular stuff, right? That we got to try to figure out. I got to have this supervisor watching the supervisor who supervises my technicians. You know, all that stuff that we're trying to figure out, right? Reason you will never do it. All I, I have six or seven, I'm a small company, six or seven big gas plants. I do it. Uh, they basically, have, you know, shot the rod. It ain't happening. We, I'm doing AWP for those, right? They will get off the AWPs. The AWPs no longer allow, right? Get away from OGI. We're going to go back to method 21 because I'm not doing that. So we'll see how. And we've been, there's been lots of comments. So hopefully, uh, Appendix K will happen. It probably won't because Appendix K was driven by the API and GPA. They want to drop, we want to be on the drive towards using technology, right? API has been there forever. Matter of fact, three years ago, if, you, if you've watched me for a while, you probably know I'll, I, I'll give Karen Marshall our time. Bless her, it was the best, one of the best regulators. Our industry is going to miss her. She went to work for Balladeer, right? She finally went to the dark side. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, I said a little bit. API, the original, when she came here to talk, I said two years ago, okay, three, you know, COVID, it was pretty COVID, maybe four. And we've been working on that. We've been working on moving this world forward for two decades now, since the mid to early 2000s. She said that, well, we're spending K, but no, it's probably just going to be for a uh, refinery. You don't really want to use it because that lobby is so strong. I mean, two weeks, two weeks ago, March uh, or April, right? I don't know what this is. Anyway, 20th, right? Uh, Karen's last day was on the 24th. So API, the production people, uh, GPA, were up in Washington complaining. You know how they have these advocacy meetings, right? And they were complaining about the super emitters and things like that. And even then, okay, API drives bus. So at that conference, I still remember telling Karen, as BS gas plants are the ones who generate all the data, all the, all the clear information, really. Now, there were a few primary studies done. You go to literature, right? But we were actually getting real data out in the gas plants, and they were saying we couldn't use the OGI method. Can you believe that? And that's because there were, you know, GPA was chilling. I'll say it like that. They were chilling. API was driving the bus, right? And well, and then that's why we have the response factor. Think about it. Why do we have all that crap for response factors and some of that other stuff? Well, if we're not just doing C1s through C5s, maybe the camera needs a little more QA, right? If we if, if we if we want to take it to this world and actually go to SOPI, wow. Well, we need to really make sure that it's going to see what they say it's going to see. So as I gripe about it, in this case, I sort of see the logic in Going back after quad o, after the uh, quad o first iteration to the second iteration, they said we'll allow OGI as codified in quad o, quad o b, right? If you're upstream, as opposed to appendix k. So the only ones you have to do appendix k in the upstream midstream world. On the gas plants, the compression stations, all that can still don't have to do with this case. In fact, to us, in, the, in what I see is a project, gas plants aren't going to do a pinch K. They've already, I mean, there may be a few, but you know, overall, you know, we're going to go back and try to go to 21, back we made those 1983. Okay. Because we had this perfect tool that's easy to find leaks. It, yeah, it's expensive, we'll pay it, but we're, we had. They don't have our training lessons. It's a video camera. Seriously, that is a video camera. We should, we have to do more training. Now, I was speaking to Deaver Bradley. Okay, everybody know everybody hopefully knows him. He's like, you know, way up in the elder consulting in the world, but doing the refinery consent decree uh, consent decree audits. We, and we were laughing. He was, yeah, I have to do less training for my professional engineering. than y'all then y'all are required to do for your for your elder technicians annually. He, he he met his CEU requirements to be a professional engineer by coming to this conference, by fact or whatever. I mean, the, it, and so I'm gonna get off the finish today, but I mean, it's so fascinating. Mm. Okay, back to this, and then we'll take a break. Okay. Well, sites uh, they have a frequency for uh, method 21 that's determined by the AWB 358, and uh, you can't have UTMs. Uh, DTMs, uh, just like federal rules, uh, OGI, you're not going to have them. Okay, so if you do, it needs to be in a plan. Okay, and all these rules, just like you're used to in whatever state or that, you need a plan. Hopefully, you're either, hopefully your provider has a template you start with and you just tweak it. So your plan should be 88% 80, 80 done from somebody else, right? Uh, DTMs, one's for you to add. Say UTM's about to 2011 under Yeah, no problem there. You got mentioned there the DTM frequency there. Yeah, here's what here, I think I, I don't know if it's on this slide, but I mentioned it. I sort of got ahead of myself. Okay, talk about components. Any place else we have a maximum percentage for DTMs in federal rules has been at the valve level, right? You can have you have unlimited connectors, but 
bound. So that, that that's odd when you compare, because I'm trying to compare and contrast so that way you can leverage out the knowledge you already have and not have to learn a whole new rule to say, okay, I know a little bit about it. I know what the big thing is. Uh, we got big thing. Does it come from somewhere else in Texas? Valves are monthly. Okay. Uh, that's about it. Okay. From a, from a gas plant standpoint, right? Upstream, it's quarterly. If you comply, uh, it's quarterly. You, have to comply. You, you don't have to comply with Appendix K. And uh, quarterly for pressure station, same angle for uh, well sites, which is the same for federal rules. So basically, you can comply with your federal rule, just change it to all existing. Uh, DTMs, UTMs says there, uh, just like, remember, we still have this in our state rule, 28 provisions or permit provisions in Texas, and from Texas. Uh, and also that's standard in there, a weekly, a weekly valve, a weekly connector ABO. Okay. In Texas, with your permits, if, you, if, this, if this is in your permit, you're allowed a 30% reduction, right? You know, 70%, but it's actually a 30% reduction from the emission factors in your emissions inventory because that's in your permit. So, I mean, th this is very common. Uh, yeah, we can't have some DTM, PRVs. In other rules, that's not there. There's no two things that DTM, PRV, and a federal rule. There's a DTM valve, but not a PRV. And where are your PRVs usually? Let's have the bullets. <laughs> You know, we have our liquid PRVs and before tanks and things like that, but those are all regulated. Go through this real quick. Uh, this is Texas codified of 60.1A. 60.1A is the AWP at the federal level. Okay, before we have Appendix K. Okay, so eventually 60.1A. Will not be there or those paragraphs in 60.8 because there's also the, play, the flare provisions and uh flare tip velocity and stuff like that so they will take those out and will be uh, in there inside the federal rules 60.18 will do appendix k frequency based on the uh how, how good your camera can see it all components be imaged distance done your daily verification and they still require method 21 for a gas plant. Uh, just like the AWP. But this does have, and the federal AWP does not have, Texas brought in a training requirement. Not as broad as uh, Appendix J. Not as broad as, uh, I think, not even as broad as Mexico trying to do that. So basically, it's so many hours in three days of initial training, which makes sense. I could probably get it. Uh, you get me, and I, and I do this. I go through, just like I do now, and I, I get the OGI theory, show my use of software. I have a manifold that generates leaks of methane and propane, get them out there, get them focusing, show my ability to the enhanced mode versus the normal mode. We, I get all that done in three days and get them some, some, some uh, uh, regulatory background. Use it to the camera. I have YouTube's videos for uh, uh, operation of it because you know if I know what button to push, and you've been through it before, I can figure out where to go. So I have all that. Uh, have I, I give trainings on FLIR, so I have all that. Uh, Hundred hours, I get that pretty quick. So you get this initial training out of the way, then you get them out there using it. He said, "Come in, you know, four or five days." As long as they understand how to manage the data, they're good and ready to go. Uh, then they learn like everything, everything we do. Well, we're getting into compressors. We need to, be, we need to understand how effervescing, I'll call it effervescing heat waves come off the hot compressor and how that can be differentiated between actual heat. And you might have to change your angle so you're not directly at that background. Maybe you start out or because we always use an enhanced mode in the highest and city mode. Maybe you work out in the normal mode first in some different angles before you go in to try to figure out if it's from the crankcase or if it's from the engine side because the crankcase is exempt. You don't care about that. It's compression, not the engine, right? These are the things. Roy, okay. yeah, if you go back to slide 14, please. I think we're not, let's see, back one more. Um, for the daily instrument check, I believe one difference 
for the for the Texas OGI AWP is that, for example, like if you had three operators, you couldn't just perform the daily instrument check yourself and then hand that instrument off to the operators. I believe one of the specifics is each operator performing surveys has to do that daily instrument check. I think that's a variation between the federal alternative work practice versus the 35. I, I've double checked that and I will at the break because it's silly. You're not doing it. You're not doing an operator check. You're doing an instrument check. Right. Okay. Uh, but it does involve an operator. So I sort of see what you're trying to get to, right? But it, is it a daily instrument check or a daily person check? Okay. I, mean, I think it's kind of both. So that is that is sort of if that's in there, I, that that is, that is definitely different, and that's a that's a bad take. As an as a me, I'm like, dude, I don't want to do anymore. You know, <laughs> we're doing a lot. It works. Well, put the onus on your staff that instead of making. No, I don't. Know. Okay, that is a perfect logical response, and, and, and I get it. But I, I I did not notice that. And uh, while we go for a little five ten minute break, I'll pull it up because that's it. That's it. That's it. Those are the important nuances I like to find. And I'm sad that I missed it. <laughs> and so I'm going to see if it's there. So it's little things like that, that that can impact your program. That manager, somebody who manages people, needs to try to find and protect your organization and your customer from. I mean, it seemed, I mean, it seemed like a little thing, but no, if I'm not, if I'm not doing that and having them, because we fill up the, the, the uh, compliance sheets, the daily calibration forms, the forms to make sure operator one, this, you know, a little note, this shall be performed by each operator, right results. And I mean, from a physical standpoint, in, in this world, I can record it, okay? And then I just need to start out in a visual mode and maybe take a picture with the card of his name. Because if you ever look at FLIR videos, they are, they are a cryptic file name. And you download 40 of them for that day or something. And then you're like, which one is it? I go by a time and date. No, I know it's in the morning. Oh, it's not that one, that one, that one. So being able to at least see it and know it and be able to name that file without having to go. I can tell you that is a very laborious management term because my customer don't want to see 40 files that you don't know what file to click on. MOB 4792. Yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So so uh, yeah, I, 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 in my head I'm thinking about the, how how I, how would you do that to make sure I could, you know, some things like that. But I, I'll follow up on that uh, during the break. And I'm sure he's right, but I don't trust him. So. <laughs> I don't trust myself either. But I'm pretty familiar with it. Yeah, good, good. Uh, no, no, no. Dang, I can't believe I, that, that was stuck out. Yeah, I think those are the two main differences: is the the training requirements and 358, and then that operator-specific daily instrument span or daily instrument check. Uh, let's take a break. Five minutes in somewhere in there. Uh, to give you an idea, we are just about done with Texas. Okay, probably four slides, five slides. In fact, I'm looking. Yep, there's New Mexico right there. Okay, come back at 15 minutes. Uh, 920. We're probably going to stay for the remainder of Texas and then jump to the, there's a TVA session that started at 9, but I'm going to stay for the remainder. Mm -hmm. There's like a, a, the Thermo Fisher TPA 2020 uh, going on here at this event, I think at 9 o'clock. They caught a lot of people off, off guard externally. They even caught some people off guard internally, uh, like reach office and investigate or something like that. But the finalization of this, like, oh, what's happening? So, yeah, I know I just, uh, I'm, I'm, I teach um, uh, the OGI internal forces. I'm like OGI is a program coordinator for the I can also deal with NZ and so I can follow out of other stuff or TCP or program supports. I think it's all over the place. So when you, when you came to the first year, you came to the I'm instructing in Beaumont next week, and Corpus, yeah. and both of the EPL and a few. I mean, yeah, no. 
think of, I think those really, I think those are the only two differences. And you may want to pull up the exact regulatory language not this, yeah. in the break and just fact check on it, but I'm pretty sure it says just operator shall perform. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to talk to the company. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, my issue that I have, you know, because I think there's so much of it. Yeah, the one issue I have is that I can't get the app because of the location on email address on the door. And so when you log into the app, I'll send some verification on the address or access it. So I can't use the app, so you have to text you like where are you? I'll find it. But anyway, um, um, I just want to talk about a couple of things. One is um, I talked to Glenn the other day, and if you do want to do some sort of viral fishing thing where you get paid up to show this type of people, he told me that I would love to do that. He said, Wait, well, he didn't remember ever talking about it with that. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Well, I'm good. I expect you to recognize the value. Yeah, I know. And if he does it, I don't know. Okay, well, that's his that, percent. But you know, it wasn't intended. It wasn't intended. It was there. Yeah. It was there. So, yeah, I think that is okay. Let's see. I'm going to sit here. I think I must have a little bit of this. Yeah, sometimes he's kind of charged with off in the direction, doesn't think about things in the periphery. So, I think that may be what happened. The second thing is your guy was told me the other day that we were making a change to other clients that were affecting you uh, in terms of how things worked. No, it was shit work. He needs some shit to pay. Yeah. Okay. And if they didn't want to do anything that was affecting you, cool. Yeah, that seemed to be uh, it. Oh, when okay. I brought it up. Well, we can fix that. We can make we can make like this by standard one thing. Yeah, sure. I think they find it. It's pretty much nothing. It's a piece of paper. It was shit. Yes, he did. 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 I was very thinking while I was on the field saying yeah. everything. Yeah. But as a busier, I was I was trying to get a company. Yes, but you know, it's really a good thing. Oh, Jack Long, everybody knows. Right. So, yeah. I have to look at the EMS sheet. It's people who are over there. Who were, it's like, here we come, why is it done? You see, you can get a down the head. Yeah. So, you have to put temper with the bad. So, it's a little bit. But that's the thing that's in front of me. There's something we're doing from other people that are affecting you, we can fix that. And if you want to do some kind of building, yes, let's see where we go. Yeah, yeah. But I was saying, was I do remember that? Yeah, I wrote that for you. We were right there. We are helping you. Yeah, some other things. But we were not going for a down. Yeah, that was, you know, the bad person. I'm sorry, everybody. I don't know. I can't do it. We got to move you out. Remember, you know, yeah, yeah, so uh, that's just one of the things I said. It was like they were starting to have to help each other out, yeah. And anytime you do something, I answer my phone, go do it, yeah. I'm sorry, but we got to try to do this, yeah. See, you pointed out that one device that we're across from the group that we're looking at, yeah, it was like looking at. I should pay attention to the app. Uh, Phoenix, which never had. There's Phoenix. 2020, right? TV with 2020. I'm not too familiar with that. That sounds about right. We mainly have the 2020s in our community. I mean, the 20 legislation. Yeah, 2020. It's 2020. Yeah, you started out with the big thing. Perfect. Thermo Fisher, scientific. If you want to break down here, like he's going to, yes, right. 
Uh, there's a session. It's probably, after you get done with the text, I'm probably going to bounce over it. I, I just looked at the room in four. I think we're in 412 now. I think it's in 414 or 415. Right. I've not used it since I was at LDEQ. It's uh, in 415 and started at 9 o'clock. And it says it's going till 11 o'clock, but it says TBA 2020 training. Right. So that's just, you know, you might be able to get the context here where you get the driver here. Let's see. Yeah. I thought we were talking about Delta tools. But that was one of yeah. I'm really up with my card up there. Okay. I'm out of the office a lot. You remember talking to me about this? I can't remember. And I go to my. Was I, it me you talked to? I remember you. I, I recognize your name, your voice from a lot of the same webinars that we've been in, including some EPA OGI workshops. We've been in a lot of the same events. I don't think I've ever had a formal discussion with you. I was, I was here and here's a lot. This is my third consecutive uh, four C. Okay. I've been here in a few of your talks. Yeah. Well, it's more like this. I find my way to just talk to somebody to try to figure out what are you going to do this big deal? Uh, I, spoke, I finally got to somebody. You got pointed around a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Very large city. Yeah, yeah, I finally got somebody who's very helpful. No, 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 you're right. I mean, he's not. And it's really hard to find somebody to offer me some additional work. Well, so, I mean, when, when I heard you ask that last question, I was like, okay, this is for real. You know, you, you know something. So it's something I don't get. I mean, okay. I'm take off. Yeah, but thank you again so much for everything. So it's, really it's, 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 uh, it's cold and snowing up there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they be clear by the time you get there. I hope so. Okay. Is anybody who kills bad by the content? Uh, I mean, it's rules. It's going to be. It's going to be a little. It's going to be a little cut up. I don't mean that. Uh, and it's the fourth day for me to my third talk, and I'm like, I'm spaz panics. I'm, 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 it's hard for me to keep my game on. But actually, I really like rules. I, mean, I like being able to break them down and bring it on a little bit. No. Uh, <clears throat> Over the years, I've gotten better at it because I've done so much, right? So I mean, it's something that you know, when you do all the time, you sort of get it. I don't know if you're ever good, but you can better, better at it. You need to kind of somewhat mirror the federal control technique guidelines, the CTG. TC kind of mirror these after the CTG, the EPA 2016 CTG, I think. Yeah. As far as when you, I'm sorry, the first of TCEQ? Yes, I think these were some, somewhat mirrored after the control technique guidelines by the EPA control technique guidelines. I wasn't involved in the rulemaking process for this. I'm in a, in a different office. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. For 34 years, I weaseled my way into the uh, reg federal regulatory development process. I never. Texas, except for D3 or the HRBOC rule, hasn't done any real rule development since 2008. Uh, as far as LDAR. Chapter 115. Yeah. 2008, 2009. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it wasn't like I didn't, there was nothing, so I don't, there was no activity uh, in, in this little niche. Okay. Okay. So uh, when it happened, like, whoa. I mean, talking about the rule, I had like, wow, how did I I'm going to go back in my head. What could I have done different to make sure that I was able to comment on it, right? Or how did I listen? That's what I live in this world. <laughs> and I mean, these other guys live in this world. How did we miss it? Well, I think customers call me. So have you heard about this? Well, no, I don't do customers yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. yeah, no, I, I talked to Jennifer. And I, we, Jennifer and I went to Texoga. And then Texoga had a work group, so we're trying to get Texoga to make sure everyone in Texoga, because she will be, uh, she moved up to uh, Tulsa, you know, uh, Jennifer Schroeder, she actually moved up to, to Tulsa. But anyway, uh, so she's with One Oak, and then uh, I was working with the trade consultant with Enterprise, and then uh, I can't remember who, uh, I can picture space from Targa. Uh, I got it in there, but anyway. So, and nobody knew about it. No, no. 
Everybody's taught me, but I think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't match up hard, do you? <laughs> but uh, dark hair. Uh, anyway, uh, so those are the three main ones. And then you had Lone Star, right? And a few others over there. I tried to contact them because since I don't know anybody. So I made right soon I heard about that. I came back and made a concerted effort to contact everybody on the bubble or everybody I knew. I called DCP, but it's I remember it's not a one. So I think of who might be in here, right? Uh, I had I had one customer, a small gas right there. Okay. And so I said, and we had they didn't send the memo on understanding out till like December whatever, right, or the three memos. Uh, so as we're trying to get ready to do, what do you want to do? You know, I got to tag my empty liquids or mock, or I, I can not tag them. I can figure out how to monitor them in the document. I, I can figure some out. But, but compliance day is January 1. I know it seems self-serving that got, I'm telling you, you need to do more work or be, uh, but the compliance risk is up to you. The TCQS said, the rule is written, it is law. So even though it's written wrong, there it is. Do it. Okay. But be aware we're trying to get a memory of understanding. So as you're trying to prepare to do tagging and initial things, and, oh, yeah, okay, what do I need to do? Do I need to hire two more people? Because my have more people. Yes, and that and the bubble, the bubble that's that's the impact. And it's so hard to turn over so much to these elder technicians anyway. Anyway, so uh, yeah, it, it was it was a it was a very uh, eye opening thing. So I'm, I'm calling people like him, saying, "Okay, how can I how can I do better? Any, anything else on your books? Because I can help you, or at least give you a sounding board. You may not like it, but at least you process it right. These are, that's the input I'd like to have. But what's the next rule? I mean, really, where are we going? We're going to regulate CO two max. We're going to regulate uh Uh, with center technologies, maybe with some of our uh, what what are the EO fiscal uh, PI to 28 PIs, right? Maybe 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 at you put something there as technologies become available to use instrument inspections, we we look at those. There was a big announcement yesterday in regards to a recent EPA risk and technology review of the the chemical manufacturing sector and the uh, ethylene oxide commercial sterilizer sector. So. A uh, really big announcement yesterday into a proposed rule. Um, I looked at it briefly last night. I did power right, it was 444 pages, um, but it's going to require um, that there's a new proposed method, EPA method 325A. So, based kind of like the refinery rule for benzene fence line sampling, it's called monitoring, but it's really sampling. Um, they the, didn't put fence line for EO, did they? Fence line for ethylene oxide, 1 3 butadiene, and maybe one other constituent. Which any of y'all know Gerald? Gerald. Ah, Crawford. Lyondell's corporate environmental manager, right? Okay. Lyondell has a lot of EO. As a matter of fact, they're fixing to sell off some of the PO and EO. You know, so it's, remember Bacella bought Lyondell, they went bankrupt and all that stuff. You got this huge behemoth, right? And now coming back around, uh, Lyondell sort of took over the took over the over the reins. Now they're spinning off everything, all those facilities, all bigger and more large. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, I was talking to Gerald Monday, Tuesday, whenever it was. You know, this conference, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. It's been a long conference, Scott. Uh, and he talked, I go, what's your problem? You know, we're, well, we do his audits, right? You know, see, you know, what are some of your other problems? All he talked about was EO and how the government's concerned about EO. He didn't mention the fence line, but we, we knew it was on the table. It wasn't. It was got announced yesterday. Well, no, but then on, for each RSR after refinery mat, ethylene mat, et cetera, which they got it out of, right? Yeah. They've been thinking about this. This is the thing. Seeing what comes off your site, and because EO is such, I didn't realize it's so uh, carcinogenic. But we revisited some of the health and human impact standards and kind of put a stronger emphasis on it from a regulatory standpoint. Yeah, and and here I'm. Logic, nothing logic makes sense. They use it in the hospital. How are the hospitals keeping track? Of, I mean, they sterilize stuff. I mean, we we just make it. We're keeping it pipes. There, they actually dentist offices. Yes. So, 
I mean, those are protect those people, you know, don't, don't make us spend $10 billion on uh, uh, fence line systems to detect something at the PPT level. But then again, truthfully, there are communities that back up to these facilities and they deserve to be protected. So, I mean, uh, uh, there's, state, there's other stakeholders besides us. So, I mean, it is what it's been involved in rural red zone for a long time. Uh, API, GPA, I go to these conferences, I talk to them, and, and then as they go through, you talk to end users, they're like, nah, dude, it ain't happening. Uh, we sat up there and told them how stupid their rule was, and they're so confident their argument resonates. Then, then when I go to these meetings, and you've spent to them, uh, uh, you, get, you get a mother talking about how somebody does it. They're, they're not the only stakeholder, okay? Citizens demand that their EPA, that their PAC tax to pay for, do their job to protect the community. And then as other stakeholders are supposed to implement these rules in the most cost effective, there's a cost-based analysis way, right? So the best rule is when nobody's happy, right? I mean, that's 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 the nature of it. I mean, EPA, if everybody hates you, you did a good job getting a rule out. So, I mean, Karen, these other people who I've worked Karen forever, bless her heart, and then uh, uh, municipal landfills, all these people that are involved with regulating these things uh, that, that can't impact community, it's a no win situation. Yeah, I'm sorry. But have you ever been in the regulatory process? It's emotionally charged, especially at the community level. Yeah. Actually, for ETO, two of our larger manufacturers in Texas, there's there's one in the Tyler area and then another in Athens, Texas. I don't think, I don't think there's a major community around those two, but EPA published a full list of like all the applicable facilities. Thankfully, two of the bigger ones in terms of the production have, have a pretty large buffer um, around them. Yeah. Um, I've sat beside it on the well, What that mean? And I've actually implemented the fence line program for benzene up in Tyler, okay? So, okay, I've looked at all their data since yeah. January 1st of 2018. They're good. They're, they're one of the yeah, best. Yeah. Well, when I, I did initial studies for them, it was Don Whaley. Okay. He's still on their reports. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think, because I'm a scientist at heart, right? I think I was getting more busy you know, from terpenes coming from the damn pine trees <laughs> than from their facility. I don't, I don't even know if they didn't go to skip periods, but because uh, some of those stuff, you go out to your boundary, you use the rule. Like you should, you know, it's it's escaping your land. So if you had a chance to buy the two thousand acres, you know, out here, you could literally place within reason your uh, off your boundary site. Worst case scenario. So I remember doing some stuff back by there. They have some and wells. They check to make sure they're not polluting groundwater, whatever they're called, groundwater monitoring wells. That sounds right. Piezometers, groundwater. Yeah, yeah, down there where they. Where they may do some bailing periodically or something, and then smoke tank. So we're going back over, over, over the boundary. So I'm back out and I'm going through and getting going through spider webs, right? <laughs> going back there, play, you know, place the initial meter and then seeing what it gets on and on. And uh, I'm like, there's no way I had a reading on this thing. Okay. So then he wants me to take him, he wants me, he takes one home. He lives out in the woods out there. If you're about to tie you know what I'm talking about. Uh, lake you would fish, you know, yeah, right. So he takes one, I said, take it home, dude, do it out in the middle of the woods. And we're trying to get a baseline in the big thicket, you know. <laughs> Same what we did. So yeah, there's there's a lot of ways to find the EO thing. If you got if you're doing any ethylene oxide, uh, I guess fine devils, towels, especially chemicals, uh 325A is for benzene. So uh but no, that's the placement. 25 yeah, it's a placement methodology. So sorbent tubes, or they um, use FTIR or LIDAR? Or... There was there were two methods. One was a TO method, and a new proposed uh, 327, which is the new new method. And then the uh, you know for benzene, it's nine micrograms per cubic meter on an annual average basis. I think I saw like when I looked at it last night, like 0.5 and 0.7 micrograms per cubic. That's as the action level, so very low. I don't know what that translates to. I know nine micrograms per cubic meter is 2.8 parts per billion. So do the math for like 0.5 micrograms per cubic meter as relates yeah. to the parts per billion. But what, what that means, much like sulfur hexafluoride, it's more easily detected when you get low detection of it. I mean, because right there you're working at the background level of uh, of the benzene method, right? 
It's a, here, we'll get back to this. <laughs> uh, closed vent systems, uh, compressed. OK, yeah, there we go. I talked about this earlier. Compressors are one time a year. We talked about no detect. Oh, I spent a little time talking about this earlier, but closed vent systems still the old one called the NDE no detectable emissions uh, initial and annually. Uh, you can actually do the annual uh, either a cloak, either visual or uh, instrument method 21. Uh, language that's not in federal rules. DTNs are being done once every five years. Uh, see anything, anything important there. Unlike federal rules, try you pay attention to this. Sort of. I've known it for years, don't worry about it. A lot of people say in a federal rule, you delay and repair July if you're waiting on parts. That is totally untrue. Is delay and repair as a process you're shutting down? Da, 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 da. In this rule, it's what showed up. You are allowed, it actually states, and uh, that you're allowed to uh, delay repair if your parts are unavailable, which is a remnant of, of some of the. Uh, Upstream rules. I've, I've heard that late treatment in the other, so that's what's always do. And a federal rule that NSPS is not allowed. It's it's in there, but it's only for delay repair pass up processing to shut down stuff. So I, I thought that was sort of a, you know, you, you pick up stuff like that, right? Uh storage tanks moving on. Not gonna go into it too deep or at all, really. Storage tanks and we, we reduce our emissions by 95%. Uh, uh, transport any leakage from our ceiling devices to a control device. Uh, if you are not long enough, we know what a seal gap is, a shoe and all that stuff. There's requirements for those. Uh, in the upstream oil field, we typically don't have an IFR. It, it's an atmosphere tank, solid tank. Up in our, the big tanks at Exxon Mobil, EO uh, different facilities, they have an internal flowing group that would approve as it floats on the product. In, and IFR is internal, it means closed, and, and an external flowing group means there's no roof kind of thing. Okay, New Mexico. Uh, just part of that. No reporting requirements. Okay, just like most Texas rules, there's record keeping requirements. Okay, so you got to keep records. So we still need data. We still may have to prove it. We still need to keep it, but we don't have to buy on August 15th or whatever, whatever, whatever. Do a single handle report. Okay. I'm going to focus on going to Mexico. I'll give you a call. Dude. It's nice to have somebody to actually bounce things off of. You're going to be on the road through like May 8th. Their travels and trainings and all that. So I'm like, I'm to reach for I got to be in Boston next week, then Colorado. So I just want to get it done. But your email's on the card, right? It is. Okay. It is. I'm going to come back in. I'm going to go check out the TVA 2020 room. Yeah, no. and, and on his way out, leave, leave some of your cards. I mean, are you in Texas? I'm in Texas. Yeah. If you're in Texas, somebody that, rest that, that you talk to that can not push you to somebody else, it's sometimes hard to find. So, you at least send you the right direction to know your question is, right? If, you, if you're involved in those type of things. Sorry, I'm going to use a lot more phone calls. I have one card left. I'll, I'll, I'll put it on the screen. We'll get it. Because knowing who to contact, you might only have to call it once a year, but your customer may need you to ask that question, right? Yeah. You know, and I call them all the time. They retire. They're working out of home during COVID. Uh, not answering with phone. So the last three years have been for everyone. You know, we, we've had some things. So, uh, interested, that's around the one at back. I mean, that's, uh, I, I was very happy to get this card. Take a picture of it. I was going to ask them to take a picture of it. I mean, same thing in New Mexico. I mean, I don't know the how do I begin to stand up? Yeah. Wow. Okay, what do you believe? And who you talk to? I mean, that is that's a challenge. You know, tell me about Mike Miller is a thing. And you want to take a look at You work in Texas? You work in Texas? Yeah, I'm Robert. And Bob is a great picture of it. Okay, yeah.
They would have moved. How many of y'all work in Mexico? Okay. Finally, we get to what you want to talk about, right? I do work in Texas, but not really in that company. Yeah. yeah. Uh, New Mexico is brand new rule. Uh, I, I would say the old home precursor rule. It obviously is. It's a fairly liberal state. I say that with no, no intentions of, of anything. Uh, so fairly progressive as far as the environmental, right? Uh, so we got the ozone precursor world. My customers asked, hey, are you keeping up with that? Yeah, I read it a few years ago. They had this large data management thing, a tag you put on, you got to track, you have right to your database. So it's it been working on it for like a couple of years. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's a fairly progressive rule. It, they told me down a little bit for this. So they've been working on it for a couple of years. About 15 years. So it regulates our typical equipment upstream and downstream. Since we've already talked a lot about Texas, compressor seals, uh, control devices, equipment leaks, uh, as far as, okay, uh, storage vessels, all that, we're gonna go a little faster through those because these are pretty much the same. Let me tell where they're different. When we get outside of some of those other ones, like a black hole dehydrator, we have any, like, does everyone know what a black hole dehydrator is? Okay. It's like, like an egg, and it, it, it cleans up the black hole, right? And so it comes back up and reuse it. Uh, that's where a lot of our benzene, we need to stop it at all. A lot of benzene emissions from those, right? So let's talk about the control requirements. Uh, pig launching. I'm, in the alcohol world, I've never even saw that. So it's just control requirements. So as we get to the way different rules are being written, like much like Quado, I'm no longer reading an Eldar rule. I'm reading a rule for a source category. That source category may be a group of components that is a future mission component. It may be a compression seal, a pneumatic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're starting to read rules a little differently than in a big world as we start to, and excuse me, not our other world when we have refineries, SOCME, et cetera, right? So there's a little shift in the way things were written, but still we had a section where all our requirements were for, for our for our future mission monitoring requirements, whether it be method 21 or OGI. So since it's different, it doesn't flow. <laughs> it just doesn't flow, but I'll do the best I can. Yeah. Keep in mind, one of the things that I thought was really is anyone familiar at all with the development of this part 50? I think it's part 50, yeah, 22, 22. So they began, and New Mexico says, I want a tag, and I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, I want a placard tag on the each possible source that has the potential to emit separator. Uh, we're not talking to each individual connector, but major pieces of equipment, and it's still, still, it's still embedded in there. But in their first iteration, they wanted to go up there with a, with their phone, scan a bar tag, access a live database that tells me what the last maintenance was done on that, what the potential to emit was, what the grants, the tons per year, and that list. Oh, that was one thing. That's them calling me. Shut that off. So. So me as uh, I, 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 a software backer, shooting about these lighting technical specs and working with developers, so I'm like, wow, you know, somebody got paid for that. They're going to build, they build it in house or something, or software as a service come up with the database, right? So as you figure it out, okay, yeah, it's pretty easy. Everyone's using the main news. We're getting that can send you to a website, right? Okay, we got to worry about security. So you, you try to think. Anyway, we went through all those processes, and eventually. Industry really pushed back. I don't want show to be able to come up to side of my flag or, you know, in these remote areas to be able to get there. So there was some, which makes sense actually, right? I mean, think about it. I'm not an operator, right? I said, how do I solve this problem, right? Anyway, so we migrated, but we still have to, when requested, we still need to keep a database. Okay. And so I threw out, I mean, this is an app of general permissions, which it's real like, you know, 20,000 foot view, but you gotta know that your, your, your customer, 
by a certain date. Uh, do I have it? You can have it up there. This year actually probably should be in bold. Should, should have a data system in place. Once again, and I sort of went ahead of myself, it applies to a number of counties. Uh, really, you're talking about uh, down here in the southeast corner and then up, up uh, in the northwest, I guess, area. Uh, I think I got mad actually. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the county it's with. So so I'm saying I'm gonna put together a little table example. Okay, so if we got engines, uh, it it's nomenclature would be you know just like it is in Texas permits or in your permits, right? It's a an EPN number, right? And then on that EPN number, you go to each one, and there'd be data that you try to keep. Uh, this is the first time I've really tried to dissect the rule. I tried, as I go through these, I try to make a matrix, okay? Because I, I don't know it that well. Like I, on these other rules, dude, I can have my back to that slide the whole time, talk about experience and get three slides ahead before I even know where I am, right? I don't know it that well. So I tried to, uh, in my slide moving forward, and I, did, I tried to color code things that have to be done with data in red. Now, Sometimes there's other things in red, but there is some things we have to track. And as a vendor for these people, understanding the heart and soul of their problems is important. You don't have to do it unless you're an OEM or you know, we're, uh, the oil and gas operator out there. But there's all sorts of things that go on. We just like what is in my world, okay? Uh, providing an inspection and a repair and document requirements in the Eldar or service. There may be some other things too, right? So you can sort of see each one of these is a, a source category that will have that has a potential to emit, which has to do with applicability, whether you have what you have to do, et cetera, et cetera. I wish my laser work because uh, uh there's you know I did a lot of tables and sort of tried to summarize the actual requirements. When I'm not as good as that knowing rule and extra details, you break it down into a matrix and make it piece, right? So of what the control requirements are. Once again, there, this do, applicability does apply to that. General provisions uh, in red there, uh, just like we took the S, SWDs out of the federal rule uh, in the revision to quad O, we, we knew it should be, right? And they changed the definition to, to, by uh, they actually the railroad commission uh, disposal well definition, put that in the definition of uh, saltwater wells. It's from SMDs. And on the federal side, here it's state, just real easy. No, no SMDs, no saltwater disposal wells. They're not applicable. That is another part of the world that's not production. Okay, you're probably the only one who understands this one. Yeah, the uh, I'm not going to get deep in it. These are going to be downloadable, okay? I think at least I try to manage the information, put it in one spot, uh, take what you like, leave the rest. Don't let it all don't download it. It may make your job easier just to, you know, have print out one you bit PDF, print out one page, put it somewhere. You might want to change it up, but use that overall format. The numbers are right. I tried to put uh, when I could always the citation up there. In other rules, I put it down to the A, B, I, one, big C. Uh, I did not do it on this one because it's, it's not it's not uh, formatted like a normal federal rule. But you know it's in one one three. Uh, if you're in engine testing, everybody know what quad J is. Quad I, right? Basically, it's so much similar to that little, little lower, a uh, little lower or different uh, frequency requirements. Uh, Non-methane, non-ethane, same old same, but not VOC uh, in, in the federal rules. Uh, if you do have some customers and you're doing engine testing, you, you, you should be, I mean, your FTIR and your other and your other instruments to get a non-VOC emission, a non-methane, non-ethane, you got to calculate your methane. You should be on a separate spreadsheet to track your methane emissions. Because if you have something talks, I said, that's the guy screwing them. What are we going to do about methane slip? We get more methane going out to that engine than most of the other stuff altogether. 
that you can flow away going through the stack in, in a lean 800 ppm, depending on where it is, 800 ppm times that flow rate, tons, tons, and tons per year. Okay. So, anyway, back to this. So, here are requirements you can't use ammonia to control NOx. Uh, this is the methane rule, and we don't have anything about methane slip yet. Isn't that crazy? I keep going back to that. We're ozone rules. I mean, we have we, VOC, which we do. It continues to make uh, you know, ground level small, right? It impacts our lungs. Okay. Here we have methane rules, and once again, we, we haven't hit one of the bigger ones, methane slips. But we are controlling engines because it's an ozone precursor rule, and we're talking about NOx and VOC, right? And these rules are currently written. They dropped them down a little bit, and it's ba based on horsepower and your manufacturer. Yeah. Here it is. We do a lot of engine testing, and uh, you know, the good thing is, similar to all of our rules, is quad J, quad I, they're all the same as far as how you do it. You just gotta make sure you meet certain limits. Most of the time, they're meeting those limits. Comply with the, with the most stringent one. There's controls in there. Uh, work fire, yeah, that's basically it. Not as, that's about all I'm gonna spend on it. We do quad J and quad I for a while. The pressure seals, mainly reciprocating. Uh, they, I'm gonna ask, we say both. You know what, out there, 98% of everything, there's very few centrifugal compression out there. I mean, I have a large facility that uses the, the, a centrifugal base, and it don't even meet the rules. It, it's a dry seal and a wet seal, okay? The rules used to be just uh, wet seals. They just brought in dry seals. For, they, they didn't even talk about dry seals for exempt. So now we're starting to do a dry seal. What do you do if you got both? I mean, this compressors. The size of the convention center of the uh, of the comp or the area about half of that, right? I mean, it's pressure. It's power generation, okay? So it generates power to run the EOR facility. And, uh, so anyway, it's been back to this. So I'm mostly going to talk about reciprocating the pressure. That's our world, oil, oil and gas, right? Uh, we have to test our. We have to replace our rod packing vents every uh, uh, twenty six thousand hours, which is basically three years. So, as that in my head, which I think like somebody sets up a, a, a software. So you say like I gotta add our tracking. If we don't have it, you gotta add our tracking because you want to prove that you comply with this rule. How do you prove you track? So in red, once again, what I try to maximize that uh, control emissions by ninety five percent. If you send it to a flare, it's ninety five percent. Okay, as long as as long as it's operating. And we do require thermocouples. Okay. And as we get to this, and I forgot to mention in Texas, where do we send emissions through a closing system? They want it sent to a process. G DHG, you don't send it to a flare. To the extent, even though there's no penalties, they said you test it. Yeah, you had to a, you should be able to a flare. Now you got to go to a process, okay, or a flare. In quad O, uh, the, 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 uh, the compressor engine requirement uh, to be testing the seals annually using a high volume sampler, okay. If you go to process, you're exempt. If you go to flare, you're not. They don't want flare. They're not going to exempt you. If you send things to be combusted, if you use it, you can't. So that's the overall loop. Where are used to we send it to control. So now we we know we don't we don't want flaring, right? We're not going to exempt you from control requirements if you send it to a CDS under negative pressure that it goes to a flare. Okay, so that's and that makes sense, right? Why 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 we allow you to send it to another pollution source? So that's I thought that was good. Uh, Got, got a couple of years to get there to, to get where we would need to be. 95% control everywhere. That's a lot. Okay. I, I'm not going to go over it. I'm not going to kill you on this. Okay. It's a closed vent system. What's required? Closed vent system. Typically, it's a negative pressure, car seal locks, going to control. 
annual inspection. Uh, after the initial one, you typically go uh, visual if you want every five years. So that is the standard. This is the standard that we have. Uh, so here, I got I put some other things in red besides the data. I'm sorry because I thought it was important. Here we got a monthly visual, okay, which is sort of common because a lot of things, even quad O B, e.g. quad O C, they're making our upstream operators do it, do visual more visual inspections. What does that mean from a data space standpoint? You got you, an operator, or us. If we're not, they're not going to pay us to do what's back there and have the guys do it right. They need some way to track it, which means a data system, whether it be EHS, Insight, XYZ, or whatever. Uh, the other thing I thought was right is uh, how many of your technicians in the program are uh, Method 9 certified? Go, go to City Angels Talk Schools. Yeah. One. I got none. I I I I gotta make, I can't do that. Next time I say remind me, I want to send you to school. Yeah, I gotta send you to school. Just next time, because I, just, I, I in in the basement, I don't where corpus is there. I got four. I got eighty percent of my staff. But not every that you can see me in the training, right? Because I got cousins all the time. Hey, dude, can you just do it for us? Yeah, we're right there. Not so much traveling, right? It's just it, you know two mile drive. So I make that. Say because method 22 uh, requirements. It's tough in oil and gas because it's a 15 minute test, six to six, whatever, uh, so many runs, whatever, just to make sure that if, if they saw emissions that it meets method 22, we go ahead and get our tech, our technician method nine certified. So that way there's smoke school training, right? So up in the Permian, I might drive three out or two out for an hour and a half to Pecos. From Midlands or wherever, and our guy might live in Great Spring, have to go all the way on the other side, drive two and a half hours, two hours to Pecos to do a 15 minute test. Still makes sense, but especially in Mexico, okay? It, uh, you know, it's tough to get people to live out there. <laughs> so travel's involved, so it's, but it is required. What's that? It's just that bad. Well, I'm born and in Mexico. No, no, no. no. It, 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 oh, man, yeah, all that is distance harder. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then everybody all working so. Thank you. Yeah, we're shaking the permit. I can't hardly hire nobody. It's like, okay. So anyway, that's all I'm promising. But that is uh, the method twenty two is in there, uh, and there's visual inspections of a lot of different things, and uh, that's control devices. Everybody knows what closed system control devices do. Basically, it's piping going to control. Okay, it's not it's not really a process pipe, but it is. Uh, okay. Well, what we had here is not so much uh, uh, your oil wells or oil pads. But as you go through, if you're existing, right, you got you, you had some time throughout this rule to get so many percent. You'll see, well, if you had 2,000 well sites, right, you got to get 30 percent by this time, 60 percent by this date, 100 percent by a certain date. So that as, as you start to look at the whole rule and how you want to use the same process moving forward, we, we go new and existing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so. Uh, for fusion equipment leaks, fusion emissions, remember it's across source categories. Okay, overall, so we're not only talking about uh, compressor station, we're talking about gas lanes, we're talking about well sites, etc. So equipment leaks is overriding, and then we got source categories that have different frequencies. Okay, based on your PT that's what we met, right? Uh, we do have uh, a, a small exemption. It had to be greater than 10 barrels for oil per day or 60,000. Uh, that's equivalent, basically, right? It's natural gas. So that those are about the same amount in their particular units. So if you're a natural gas well, 60,000 cubic feet per day. If you're a oil well, it has to be above a, a, a 10 to do weeklies. If you're less than that, it's monthly. Okay. So this is for ABO inspections. And then we go to the next one, OGI or method 21. So we're sort of going down from visual to OGI and method 21. 
uh, there's our frequency on the right. When's it required? Now, as soon as the rule was passed. So, okay. So if your potential energy emit was real low, it's one time a year. If it's in the middle, it's uh, semi annually. If your PGE is above five times per year, it's cool there. What does that really mean? Uh, most, most of your smaller popcorn wells, okay, are going to be are going to be either annually, and some of those might be semi annually. Because you know, what is popcorn ambiguous thing? It's a smaller size, right? A three pack could be if it's doing a lot of production. A six pack may not be if it's low, if it's older, right? If it's just existing wells. So your PTE, they should know. They're going to tell you what the frequency is. You just got to. I, I, I think everyone set up a service company here, right? Yeah, they, you know, we don't know what the PG is unless you're a consultant doing the calculations. You know, right? So there. Uh, for uh, gas plants, uh, it's monthly. Okay. What you got to worry about, okay, how many of y'all are you do, doing the AWP for a gas plant in New Mexico? Anyone? Think about, okay, think about this. If you, if you were doing the AWP, because somebody talked you to do the AWP Expo's event 21. You got to keep videos, all the stuff, and you got to do an annual method 20 or one of those six bi monthly periods, right? We got to do our method 21. So, all of a sudden, we have to, in the Venn diagram, we have to comply with both rules. Okay. So, I'm doing monthly where I just got there rock and roll. I don't have to keep videos, I keep track of leaks. That's what this rule requires for leaks. Okay. 515. And then over here, that next month, because I'm going to so every month, I do a more rigorous OGI, right? Because I got to keep videos of all, of all the inspections or everything, right? I got to gotta have, there's more QA, right? And at the same time, because I'm still complying with uh, BBA from a semi annual reporting process. Each time those you find here, just those are visual leaks. Right? I got to put them in my leak program because I have to show them on my database because it's going to be annual reports. So I can do my annual monitoring and doing that. I can find three, three different programs, right? And then, okay, remember, and, I, and I'll break it up uh, into I call it one or two months. We got six periods. We got one month to one month, other ones to two months. Heavy light month, whatever you want to call it, the world we used to it, right? So in your one month, you're doing this. In your two months, you're doing this throughout the year. I get scheduled. January's one, February's two, March is one, two, one, two. And then in that one biennial period, you got two months to do 20,000 just connectors to. Okay, you got or whatever number that is. You got 10,000, you got 6,000 dials, you got 20,000, 20,000 total components. You got 14,000 connectors, right? Okay. Well, in 500 days, like, oh man. Okay, so that's, but you don't have to do it in one month, like the, in a, like the vows, you know, this monthly program. So knowing how to, knowing how to set that up and do that and understand what rules you're under, because we don't want to go out there day one, do an OGI for New Mexico, redo the OGI for uh, in the heavy month or there. We want to go out there one time and do the program large enough to comply with three separate rules. So just, and it can be done. You just got to understand what you're under and set that template up. Uh, uh, compressor stations, they're quarterly. Uh, actually, I got a couple that are monthly. Uh, so that, that, you know, if you got probably five, four or five compressors, you may be monthly. Uh, how many compressor stations y'all do over there uh, 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 on OGI? And you don't have to know. I mean, I, I get. Uh, uh, I do. Uh, let's say twenty over there off of one customer, and uh, I think four of those are monthly. Okay, asking what it is. Like, you know, they're busy. They don't, they don't really need to tell me everything. They just work back and forth. But uh, so twenty five percent, the bigger ones. You know, I, I'm just managing. Bro, I don't go out, go out to them, so it's hard to get a good feel. But uh, as how many questions do that one? Because I want to know, right? Uh, you know, so it's tough getting those. But I would assume if, if you got most of your compressors, just like three or four compressors, right? And there's bigger ones, I'm sure, but most of them three or four. So if you got more than four, or if you're a peel that needs to push a lot of gas, 
Because you got food pressure, you don't need PPE, you don't need to push you that much, right? Based on supply and demand. Okay. Uh, transmissions are all quarterly. Uh, transmissions are the bigger pipelines. Okay. Uh, gathering from the different fields. Uh, fusion missions. In New Mexico, I don't know how many sites are actually within of an occupied area. Uh, Everything's just out in the middle of nowhere. And occupy, and I'm not even going to show a hard time. Okay? <laughs> but when I drive out there, where I just don't need to get something to eat. But we got to feed a store right up the road for 16 miles. Yeah. Just, just to get a bag of chips. Go up and got to buy a snicker bar or whatever it was, right? Don't need big meals. Just give me something to put it in the gullet, right? Yeah. So, uh, and so I'm sure they're out there. I'm saying when they're loaded because uh, oil is either down here on the on the on the southeast or a little bit up here northwest. So people live there, so I'm sure it can happen. But if you, if you if you're within in that impact area, you're, you're more frequent, which makes sense. Uh, and then where we talk about uh, the the the, grade, the grading in of compliance. Uh, if you're existing, we and I'll call them popcorn, stripper wells, whatever you want to call them, there's a whole bunch of stuff that maybe you see your jack going up there, or it's been happening in six years or whatever, right? These old fields uh, that may still be going, I'll throw barely, made, I don't know. You know, it's obviously it's doing something, right? You know, so if it's going up and down, and it could be hundreds, thousands of them in the permanent. And the next one, that's it's bad. I mean, not bad, it's a lot. So, so if the PTE is small and you're a, a, a small operator that bought a field that is given away for free because they don't want to mess with it or whatever, you can have 400 wells out there. They ain't making you no money, but breaking even a little, they like maybe want to sell that acreage, whatever, that type of thing. So you have some time to uh, begin the process of getting these in compliance, okay? Or you just don't get them if you're pioneers, something like that, and you take care of it, right? Uh, so that's when I talked about the gradating of things in. Uh, inactive wells, this is this is a trade. Even quad OB, we talked about cradle grade closure. So this is what's up, it's a gap in previous rules. So now, until that thing plugs the man and whatever they do at the state level to make sure, it, like, rural commission handles those in Texas. I'm not sure if they have it like something like that in New Mexico. Okay. I am not. <laughs> yeah, my wife is OCD. I know what that's like. Yeah, but uh, I'm not living uh, But uh, all the way to closure, which is good because we've seen the, the articles. How bad is the uh, abandoned well issue at different places? East Coast is really bad. Okay, I'm sure it's bad in the Permian, but you know. A lot of the older oil production in Appalachia, Ohio, some things like that. I, I hear more about that than I do in the Permian. I don't know why. Maybe maybe because that land's still valuable and that other stuff, you know, these companies went out of business. I don't know. But uh, anyway. So all the way all the way cradle to grave. Uh, that's for uh, those. Does everybody know what well unloading is? Does anybody know what it is? Yeah. I'll let you know. What is it? When you're unloading the well, it's said that you're if you've got blood jump water, so you don't produce nothing. So when they unload you back in the day, they went straight to tanks because you opened the valve and pop a bit straight to tanks, or you got the soap stick and it's not even the tanks, it's just straight to atmosphere. All of a sudden it starts coming. Yeah, and he's old, old building. Yeah. Soap stick, that's what. What it is to me, okay, I'll tell you. You got a gas well. Imagine this formation is flowing gas every once in a while. Uh, it's a little spit, a little vapors and mist and whatever, right? We got it, so it's dropping down the bottom. It goes up head pressure. We got a pressure to formation, right? And it's 100 psi. Well, if whenever our head pressure of the column of liquid above that goes above psi, that formation will flow. What he what he does, you drop a soap stick in there, and it turns into suds, which becomes lower and less density, allows it to be unloaded because that formation now, uh, the density there. So it's getting rid of the head pressure of a column of water. Okay. 
They a lot of times there's mute to it, you know, even if it, or so to say. So it's just what they do. Sometimes your natural gas wells will will load up. Okay. And you know, the the, the turn the roustabout, whatever that pumper is all that person runs it. He had he has box little soap sticks everywhere. Okay. And the, which when that happens, spitting that water out, there's 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 solution. Okay. It, but it's something we've done for years. We gotta get that thing to blow oil or to flow. Now we're just gonna be controlling those. Uh, uh, there's B and P best management practices. Remember, I'm not an expert in this area. Uh, I am a geologist by trade. Been a lot in my earlier years. Uh, at MWD, I worked offshore. I've done. I worked. I ran a coal turbine truck, nitrogen pumper, right? So and uh, worked for Kelly Services in every place. I guess you got to college. And oil field was like this. If you live it, you know what I'm talking about. I got the hell out of it in the 80s. Okay. But I have a background, so I love it, right? But, but I'm not an expert in it. Okay. I, just, I sort of know about it. So where I'm going with this, we've got plunger lifts and different ways. There's best practices that will minimize that stuff, right? Uh, unloading most of the time is a natural flow. Okay. If we got a lift system, we don't have that. We don't have that fluid buildup to cause the head pressure to keep them forward. So when we talk about what this, what are you talking about? Well, if we actually just have a lift system, we don't have to unload it very often. Yeah, I guess it could still, you know, I'm not an expert at that. I mean, but the fluid's being pumped up so we don't build up head pressure, right? Okay. Uh, back section. Because they don't do the communication from the pressure. Yeah. And your, and your water system. But that one thing on that, whenever they're saying best practice, some of that stuff in the older basins, I don't know what they're going to do because they don't have the real best practice. It's old school ways, or and it's still so sticky. They drop it in there. You know, pump jackets. I mean, they don't make nothing. Like San Juan Basin up there in New Mexico, for instance, it's cold and nothing. It's not worth nothing. It's 600 BGE gas. So right now, I guess the average is two dollars. They're going to make a dollar an MCF for it. By the time you pump off all this water, tank, and everything else, they don't want to pump jackets, more space. They don't want to put tank systems and blow the stuff too. So you can see a lot of that where it's just going to get shut in for the yeah, So you can't put it there. Yeah. So they got, they're not doing that. Them putting more equipment on the path is very survived. So 20, 30 MCF a day. I don't know what else they put up. They just no one else has one of the 900 BTUs, 1,000 BTUs. Yeah, 1,000 BTUs. That's our 20 meter so far. I didn't realize it was going to be in that book. Yeah, it's it's got spiritual meters. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're talking about the same water we base in results. Trivial information that's worthless, right? That's where our, but this is going to be a CO2 commodity that's occurring, right? Okay. Most of our, CO2 is provided from a couple salt domes up there in that same area. That's why we start we transition from a coal bed methane, right, to pure CO2. Probably the only natural CO2 formations in the world, but maybe some more. We bound in the outdoor well and ran across CO2, right? We're up there just one in Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. Uh, those are oh, around 50 years though. Oh, yeah. Okay, they start starting to be depleted. So the carbon economy, the whole other thing we draw forever as far as CO2. But anyway, uh, so um, that's, I'll be back in trash. Yeah, so I'm really I, 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 no, no, I, I, I let you, because I love stuff like that, right? Okay, uh, so anyway, the, we natural gas we're unloading, it needs to be done differently. So when he said, what are we gonna do? I said, you know what? You don't have a choice. Clean up your ad or go, go someplace where you can make money, right? Uh, so. Uh, black all dehydrators. Okay, everybody knows what one of those is, right? I'm asking rhetorically, I'll answer quickly. Okay, uh, having the gas coming out of the well, it can be a little wet. We'll use the word wet, okay? Whether it be NGLs, that's what gas that puts out, NGLs, or H2O itself, right? It's high temperature down there, you're humid. So, the, the, a glycol steel basically brings it up, boils it out, okay, right? and then brings through a condenser, and then it's fresh gas wells, right? They want the gas. Condenser liquids out, 
And that still uh, is one of the stinkiest polluters in the past three, I mean, two decades ago, three decades ago, when I was out there, my eyes almost went like this when you walk by a black hole again, right? Because it, it's paint down. What's coming up the top after you get after they do it? And they just, I don't even want to inject it or let it go. I mean, it just goes out the top of the stack that steam and condenses and just goes off. Blue, bad. We don't beat me. We don't beat Texas or anything. Well, they changed that practice over time. And uh, uh, I, I, but I stopped using my hand handler. It's pretty much, yeah, we could pretty much the show. It went straight to the gas, but they handled it, put a knockout pot or whatever, you know, things like that. But anyway, so now we have uh, a rule for black hole dehydrators, right? Uh, you got to go to control. Uh, if you're above a certain tons per year, 95% uh, control if you send it to a process, which you should. There's a lot of good, valuable BTU in that crap, okay? And then uh, if you go to control device, 98% standard stuff. And just so you know, Trey, most of the time we will never get asked about these. So learn what you can. It's good information, but we deal in the LDAR world, right? So that's our world. But they, they have these pieces of equipment out there, and your knowledge about them allows you to communicate with your customer better. So, you know, that's that's why I put it in here. Uh, heaters, uh, if we do stat testing, these require, these require periodic testing uh, or have standards. Uh, Every two years, used to, on these smaller heaters out there, we used to not have to do it. They were out of compliance. I mean, key. unless it was covered under the federal rule by a new source performance standard, or they had enough half the major source to be under 60, yeah, three, right? Wasn't done. Okay. So here's another thing that they're going to be forced. They may be doing the volunteer, it may be under the federal rule. I don't know the size is difference here on that. I apologize for that. But here we have, if you're above so many BTUs, uh, you have to be tested. How many gas banks you out there? I do anything. David? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I didn't know what 20, how big 20 million BTU is. I don't know what we're talking about. Anymore. You know, I'm talking about. So most of them, I don't even know what size. We got the. Uh, uh, we, have, we have some more combustion choices that have to do with uh, hot oil heaters, uh, and there may, be, it, it, there may be another reason. Usually it's hot oil heaters in your gas plants. Uh, anyway, more testing, not LDR, but stat time testing. Hydrocarbon liquid. I, I, I don't get involved in that, right? But you're transferring liquids from one tank to another, or maybe to a truck, et cetera. You have some control requirements. So what they're trying to do is every possible step in the oil and gas production and transportation, find the potential to emit, and then submit some control to it. These controls, uh, just like any, just like in tanks, all right? A trucking, it's just a tank. Uh, vapor balancing. And and send uh, papers to control. Almost like if you work in work in ports, when you when you fill a ship, so you got these huge tanks, these incredible pumps pumping ninety thousand barrels an hour, or whatever it is. Those up the vapors from the top of that ship are transported back to the dock to vapor combustion. So in that analogy, all we're doing is when we load that truck, right? The vapors, they'll hook a, a hose up to the top, got to come back to a combustion device. So that's that's liquid movement, right? So that is something that's got to be required. Uh, and that control device has some requirements. In the ship channel, 99.9 .9 is instruction to see or control. So they're allowing 98 on these. Big launching. We all see them. I don't know where the vapors go. Where have they been going? Yes, <laughs> I know I say that right. So yeah, it's a great, it's a great, it's a if you can do it, and now they say you got to, you got to control it. Okay, so I'm not sure, but every gas plant, I see the inlet. I, every every unit, I see the inlet. There's a either a pig that's this big around, or a pig that's this, you know, this big around. So they launch a pig usually not uh, usually for uh, liquid controls. Uh, sometimes they may 
uh, uh, put devices on it for corrosion and things like that. So uh, now they actually require uh, uh, controls. We've always put them in the Eldar program. Have, like, put, I mean, so uh, it, it's blank. There's valves on there, right? So we, we usually include them, and you know, sometimes they leak, sometimes they don't. I don't know if there's not any pressure on there, but there's a good block valve. We haven't had a real problem with big launching devices. Uh, uh, on that scenario, I think there's going to be more issues because they're going to have to tighten compression on the end of it to pull it down, put it back in the pipeline. So I think there's going to be a lot more valve usage and wear on it for that scenario. So before, we're always kind of gas plants out and put down. So I think they're going to be a lot more because they're going to have to pull that little gas from it and put it somewhere so they're going to put compression on the end of it. Okay. Okay. See, I'm thinking uh, you drop the pressure down, there's no vapor in there, but it's a half of pressure, right? Uh, if the pig goes that way, it's forcing vapors out. My thought is I think about control is a, a portable combustor. How often do you launch? Do you rent one all the time? Does your flare have capacity? You know, you put me on that. Does your flare have capacity to do it? You have to send it to control. If you compress it down, you put it back in, it's the best thing. It's anything feasible. You know, I mean, you're going a vacuum compressor with the boot product. Oh, and I'm sure they're going, huh? But screw on when you pull a vacuum or a big company, you can pull a vacuum on that line. Yeah, but since you open it, put the pinning in there, you lose your vacuum. I'm trying to think of what, so I, got the, this thing, I don't know, but I do know they, they have to do some control. And I know how, and, and we know how they've done it in the past. Yeah. Open the valve. Okay, all right. Liquids are going to a pond or to a, you know, coming out and uh, not not good. It's like I'm taking my oil, unscrewing my oil pan, walking off, coming back in, putting the lid back on, and filling it up with oil. I mean, that is the responsibility that process has, but it's just methane and crap. It's just air, right? So that's been brought. Now we're regulating methane. It's just, it's just, I never really looked at these source categories before, so it's sort of interesting to me. Pneumatics, we've been dealing with those for a while. Uh, if you're a gas plant, you need zero bleed rate. Uh, the interesting thing to me was, uh, okay, Go, goes all the way to uh, compressor station, uh, which uh, if you don't hit, uh, if you don't have access to fire, you got two years to get it. Okay, so they like the flexibility for not being off grid. My customers in New Mexico don't have, only have you know two or three in New Mexico, a uh, lot of Permian. Everyone has access to grid. Yeah, it may not be a pretty grid, but it's full with a line. Okay, so you can probably run a compression. Right. Uh, any other requirements make sense? These are standard pneumatic controller pump requirements sent to control, uh, you know, uh, zero emission rate with access to commercial, with, with access to commercial power, without access. You can see sometimes I read these, this, I forgot to take this out. I, 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 as I read it, I'm like, dude, that, I don't, that, this don't make sense at all. I don't remember what that was, but that's my own little comments as I go through and do these rules and break them up to matrices. Uh, but obviously, if you don't have access to commercial power, uh, 5D in there, I have to look at that again. But th there is a prorated mechanism uh, to take care of that. Okay, maybe it's a plug or something like that. Storage vessels. Uh, you may have a lot of existing tanks in these batteries, so it gives you some time to get into get into things. Not an excellent storage vessels are basically closed. If you have if you have closing devices, they need to be shut. And uh, any vapors, VRU or whatever you do with it, it, it needs to go to, if, if you're not recovering it, it needs to go to a flare, 90% control. I didn't understand this. I've never seen it in a rule, and I'm now remember reading it. You see, I have, I have it in red. I've never, I mean, so they're actually going to keep track of the liquid quantity in there. That may be from a PT but they're going to do their tracking. I'm trying. I've never seen anything where, they, where you need, you they're requiring you to measure how much liquids in the product. Does it make sense? Yeah, 
I've just never seen that in, in a rule. Uh, and <laughs> you can see why I put the question mark to the record keeping part. OK, it talks about a, 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 a measurement system. So obviously that's a key component for their potential to emit type of stuff, I guess. Uh, but it was different than other rules I've had, even for tanks. Because I storage dust splitters, and I go over, they have storage dust from Michigan Quad OA, Quad OD, uh, B7, et cetera. Well, workovers, uh, once again, much like the uh, loading and unloading, they just want you to do it in the best, you know, in a, in a acceptable best management practice. Uh, well, workovers, and then they come back in and they have a sand bridge, uh, same type of thing when you have this formation spitting stuff in there. There may be some particles of sand in addition to liquids. Well, that sand, as it starts to be pushed up, it's just like getting dust in a capillary of a Phoenix or a TDA, you know, it's going to impact the flow rate. So, uh, you know, uh, all these things can happen. So a well workover is fixing those problems so that well is back to its normal production. So it probably usually is cease crunching. So during this well workover, you're having to blow it out once again. So they just want you to keep track of that. And once again, implement some which commonly used for these non-traditional source categories, best management practice. We don't know how we're going to do it, but there are going to develop best management practices, BMPs. Okay. Uh, that's not an SWD. Okay. That produced one. That, is that the, uh, in a six pack? Is that the three water tanks that next to the three oil tanks? We, we have a typical oil pad. I've never heard this language before, but they talk about design capacities, uh, produce water management unit, uh, effective date, administration plans, things like that. Who is in here from Me is from New Mexico? What are they talking about? You don't know either, do you? So just like they make like a client that they recently like built a series of tanks and they're spending a ton as well and they're taking the water out of the soil back and and um you know like we were originally concerned about having sulfide because of the power area but I'm like yeah that's like what they built is a so water you, management unit. Yes, it all makes sense now. During the, and I mostly deal with after it's already built. I don't see any PWDs, right? I mean, but during production and all the well, you know, they're, they're sending stuff to there as they're producing, right? Okay. Uh, actually, yeah. I, I didn't get it. more primarily earthen material. Right. OK, yeah, I remember it now. Yeah, so that's what it is a ponds out there. Uh, they're not covered. Usually there may be a tank associated with it. Right. Uh, you know, maybe some better burst into that. I don't know how they do it, but uh, there's some rules for that. But uh, I don't deal with much with production. I mean, actual initial production drilling in the well. Most of my stuff is on the back end where it's already done. So this was interesting. And, and in the rules that we typically do, I don't remember anything being regulated in that. And hearing that, that phrase you before in the federal rules. So if you're in New Mexico, just know that. Probably won't have to do anything. It's their responsibility, uh, but at least be familiar with what they're doing. We all know what a flow back, but I know what a, being a geologist is not going to you know, you're flowing back to a vessel first. This is the process where you're getting the production going. Okay, measure and see how productive it will be. It's simply a several day process prior to actually putting it back in my back in line. What are those those green uh, those green vehicles going around? They're a company, but they especially they got whole companies that know about flow back. They live out there in a trailer and they do that stuff for the gas thing or well and function it up in trailer and they are they are tweaking the the the, the well as it to do primary production. Sometimes this can take two days, sometimes it can take 30 days. So that's what we talk about in that. And once again, you're using 
uh, 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 best management practices. And through that process, just like when operating the well, you got to take stuff, you got to take papers to control. Uh, and then I, I've never even seen this before, but I'll tell you something. The operator of that process will handle a lot of those inspections. Each one out there. Okay. And remember, we're in New Mexico. It's lots of non-traditional stuff we're not used to seeing before. We touched on, right? The fusion one, the pressure stations are quarterly. Some of your gas plants will be monthly. Gas plants will be monthly. Some compressor stations will be monthly if they're big. Okay. Your well sites are going to be are going to be semi-annual. Okay. Uh, it's all existing sites that have a PTE above a level in here. They have an exemption for small two tons, I think it was, right? Uh Elgar, Elgar, uh, New Mexico. Be sensitive to the fact that the customer is going to have to track data on inspections and then on every source. Now that future emission source may be your inspection. Okay. So as you gather data, okay, he said to the fact that he's got tons of stuff he has to do. And your ability to help solve his problem, maybe it's just date, time, how many leaks, what, what is required for him to add that to his data management system to show the, the what was done as far as on the rule documenting compliance. Okay. Uh, hopefully you're not giving him a, 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 a word file or an email that says hey, four leaks were found, things like that. You should be you should at be sent to talk to him and that. How are you how are you tracking it? I want to be able to take your data into your legacy system for, for file transfer. That should be it. It shouldn't be any manual entry. Okay. But that depends on the state system. So he has a couple of years to get that done. But you know, my how y'all gonna handle that? How how can we do work on our process to make sure that your process is less complicated? Texas doesn't have a data management system, uh, no reporting. Okay, just like our permit permission, record keeping. So when you go through that section, uh, if you're doing a traditional LDR program. You're doing fine. Okay. Uh, this guy here, uh, well, something. He, he's, he brought it up politely, but he, he trains on their OGI. He wouldn't have brought it up unless you're pretty confident. My thought is, I do believe, based on what I talked to him over there, he's probably right. I missed that. Okay. What that means is in verification, we've always. It's been an instrument verification daily. It's called it a daily instrument verification, right? And so we're not that we have three people out with the same camera anyway, right? But unless we're trained, it, it's one person. It, I mean, we, we can't, they will pay for two OGI operators to go out there, right? So if we can charge two, maybe that guy's doing repairs, whatever. Uh, but the only one using the camera, anyway, I said, what? If that's the case, all I have to do is on, on, on that on that form I have to document that information. Have another have, have a second one for a second operator, and then operation they do. If you're putting three out there, uh, you're not running you're not running your part of your business right. You know he's not operating. He ain't operating the camera. And if you have two out there, see, he's operating the camera. You're managing, you know, hanging the tags, fixing the lead, putting it in the database, anything like that. So that would be the whole real impact operationally, but you need to be aware of that. And it's not in, in text, possibly. I pretty confident he was right. I mean, I don't like arguing people that are confident because I haven't seen looked at it, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, that would be the only thing, which I didn't take into account. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for staying in. It's Friday. I, I can't believe you're not home with your families. No, I told Steve, I said, okay, dude, I said, no one's going to be there. It's good Friday. He got families. What am I saying? He wasn't. So thank you for the. So I think we can get this presentation before we get it. Uh, 
case of Northern Light, we don't have that. That's what I did. Yeah. Now, uh, we're still getting all these, and at some point in the future, we'll stay they? on the map. Say, where are these presentations? Where are these presentations? Right. And uh, and also, you can probably develop it. Well, it would be one. There's only good content in that. Yeah, I mean, it's that that's the rest of the information I was trying to see. You asked if you do something for Friday. Yeah, I, I, a lot of that didn't apply to me as far as in New Mexico. We probably have this couple of gas plant. So that was fine. Are you doing your both deals? Yeah. 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 Next year, I'm not going to party. I'm not doing three talks. I'm in the team.